Uh, good evening. This is Kim Taylor, Chair of the Harbor Management Commission. Um, this is the December 19, 2023 meeting. Um, we are in the um, first floor conference room at Sullivan Independence Hall. <laughs> Hey, Bill, could you mute yourself? Uh, I'm on mute, so that's not me. I, I've been on mute. Okay, thank uh, you. Hello, Dave, Dave Henry just called in. Sorry if that was me. I'll mute. Okay, Dave. Uh, Dave, have you been sworn in? Uh, I have not. Okay. All right. Um, that's okay. That's good. That, that's... If, if you had been sworn in, um, somebody else would have to run this meeting, so. We're good. Um, I'm glad you're joining us. Yeah, I understand. Uh, no worries. Thank you. Uh, this is, uh, as I was saying, this is the December 19 meeting of the, Fair, of the Fairfield Harbor Management Commission, first floor independence, first floor conference room, independence hall, uh, here with quite a crowd, commissioners Jeff Warren, um, George Harris, Doug Metchik, Chris Smith, Don Hyman, alternate Belinda Shepard, and Mike Beasley. 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 Yep. Um, and Betty Gabriel is with us. Harbor Master LeClaire is here. Assistant Harbor Master John Dean is here. Uh, Jeff uh, Engborg, Pequot Yacht Club Manager, and our mooring contractor is here. And Jeff Stedman is in the building. Uh, Jack Hersler, former commissioner, uh, is also with us uh, this evening. Uh, so, to get to calling this meeting to order, let's start out by pledging allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. all. Thank you. You're very welcome, Pat. Um, so before we begin, because we have a lot of folks here, we have um, 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 mics at the end of the table. That's what those little gray things are. Um, I know because I've listened to the recordings in the past that um, it can, even though you feel like you're speaking at a normal tone, it doesn't always pick up. So if you are, have a question or comment, please look at the speaker and maybe speak a little bit more loudly so that the recording um, will will catch what it is you're saying. Um, so we need to approve the minutes from the November 21st meeting. Can I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Doug moves. Second. George seconds. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's great. Um, so my report, on November 29, um, the Siting Council letter that I sent to those of you who were commissioners at the time, I forwarded on to uh, Jen Carpenter and uh, the new first selectman, Bill Gerber, uh, at, at, um, at, at their request. On December 4th, uh, Jeff Stedman, Jeff Warren, and I and um, um, the uh, Jeff Engborg uh, and Brian met with uh, Coral Silgado, who was the Army Corps of Engineers um, project manager for the South Pork Dredging Project. We took a look around. Uh, we, we viewed the um, area to be dredged from the lower wharf. We went over to Sasco Beach and we walked along the path that we are hoping the uh, Army Corps' trucks and equipment will use to get to the area to be dredged. Uh, we reconvened um, at the Yacht Club and we just chatted generally about the schedule, uh, what still needs to be done. Um, uh, Coral made it pretty clear that though she would like to move ahead quickly with the project, uh, in all probability we will not be seeing anything being done until sometime next winter. Um, there is one uh, hopper dredge for the entire east coast of the country, uh, and um, as much as she she gets she gets I think she told us a grand total of 45 days a year, and she has one project that is uh, uh, bigger and more important than we are that is going to take 30 days of that 45 days. So she was unable to push it push it up. 
So next winter, in, next winter's dredging season, which is typically uh, end of October to sometime in February, is when we're hoping to be able to see the Currituck. Um, was not what we wanted to hear. We had some suggestions about, um, um, you know, could they move it along? Could they do it? Could they do the project differently? But at this point, the Corps, for economic reasons as much as any other reason, is pretty committed to using their own equipment uh, and their own personnel. Um, and anything more uh, would not only cost more money, but take it beyond the budget that they have from Congress for the project. So. We, we, we can't, uh, George? What happens if there's an emergency like a storm this winter or in the spring and we call them it and tell them. Navigable? We call them and tell them. Okay. And, and maybe they respond and maybe they don't. I mean, we, 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 uh, we, we, in fact, we asked her that question and she said, believe me, I know I can see how, how badly you guys need it done. And, this is, this is what I got. This is what we're working with, and um, unfortunately, there's we've, we've been pushing pretty hard, and that's that's where it stands. Okay. So, are we aware of any other harbors that had emergency dredging for ports that didn't shut down? Well, they have a way to do. That. I we are not. We are not. We are not. They did send us. Jeff, remind me the picture of a harbor up in Massachusetts that looked um, that they dredged this. Recently, within the last year, that looked looked worse than ours did. It might might have a lot to do with the commercial effect as a result of the shutting down of the harbor. I mean, if it was a commercial port for right. fishing or other purposes, that'd be a different thing. And there, she was interested in that because we do have one commercial fisherman in there, oh. and uh, she said that makes a difference because now it becomes a commercial harbor as opposed to all the recreational. <laughs> uh, and there, you know, now we have a commercial fishing harbor. Jeff? Remember also that the harbor is specifically authorized as a harbor to serve pleasure craft. Uh -huh. So it, that, that's what Southwood Harbor is authorized for, and then the court has the responsibility to maintain it. We, a, after Storm Sandy, well, I don't want to go into a whole bunch of that, 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 that was a severe event that could have perhaps closed, closed the harbor, but. But didn't. And then we, we talked about it, it wasn't an emergency at that time. But we had talked with FEMA about the possibility of getting FEMA funds to to remove sand that we could we determined was was deposited by by Storm Sandy. We had a survey before and, and after, and, and that's when we did we didn't get the FEMA funds. But but your your question, if the harbor was to be shut down and it was not navigable, what would we do? And, and I don't know that we know the answer. We'd have to talk with the Corps of Engineers and see see what the response would be. There would be an expedited way to get approval. Uh, to to uh, to dredge it. Um, yeah, I hope we don't have to get to that that point. Uh, so by law, the, we couldn't have the town say couldn't come up with some money and go to a private dredging company. I, I, well, we need permits. We need. I I, I don't. I, Jeff. <laughs> well, it also it depends on what material is the problem because that that has to be determined where, where it can be properly disposed of. If it was if it was the sandy material that we're talking about, then we might have a you know a more quick a quicker way to, to to get rid of it. But if it was silty material in the outer harbor, for example, we we just can't dredge it and, and dispose of it without it being tested. So that there there would be a period of time. But you know what we we'll ask the question between now and, and the next commission meeting. If there was an emergency, what would be the procedure to, to follow? We should know that answer after all these years, but I. I don't know. Okay. Uh, on December 8th, um, I responded to an inquiry that, that the harbor master got from um, uh, uh, Captain Hector Irizarry of the Fairfield Police Department. He wanted to put a uh, – wanted was offering – the put offering in – for the police department to place a memorial bench down at the lower wharf. Um, I explained to him that not only did we have deed restrictions, but the commission had uh, fairly recently um, uh, considered having uh, whether it would be appropriate and feasible to have a memorial bench program down at the lower wharf. And the decision of that commission at that time was that it would not be appropriate or feasible. And um, they wanted the, the bench in honor of Megan Ravis and um, um, so I, I, I let him know what, what our position on that was. 
Um, on December 4th, I sent a, an email to James Went, uh, the Fairfield Planning Director. Uh, it also went to the TPZ commissioners, the Shellfish Commission, Kim Bishop, the chair of uh, the head of the conservation department, uh, the harbor master, uh, and uh, Kristen O'Neill at Deep, uh, the town attorney, and John Dilley, who is president of the Mill River Wetlands Association, uh, just letting them know that uh, what are, that our comment to the draft POCD was that it should mention the harbor management plan in its uh, its draft, uh, and that uh, going forward we might have additional comments, but. If, for, at, at the very least, um, our contingency review of, um, of uh, projects along the Mill River were, um, were part of our responsibility, and that should be mentioned in the, the Fairfield Plan of Conservation and Development. So, POCD? POCD, Fairfield Plan of Conservation and Development. It's done every 10 years, mandated by the state. Um, the um, the current POCD is in a very impressive document, um, you know, an inch. It, 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 it's about the same size as our harbor management plan, um, and it's got all sorts of, um, based on um, several town meetings that they had over the course of the last several years, uh, um, asking folks at those meetings what are they in, most interested in in terms of uh, town amenities, uh, describing where schools are, where the school kids come from, where the development in town is. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a massive undertaking and a very impressive document, but it didn't mention uh, the, the Fairfield, the, the Southport Harbor Management Plan or, or, you know, kind of our role in, in monitoring development along the Mill River uh, in the vicinity of the harbor. So that was the position of, the, of our commission that um, we it should mention that, Don. There's just so for my information, does that kind of communication get kept on our website? Yes, that's an official. Yes, it goes. My mailing and all it gets the, kept on our website. All of these, all of these letters, and all of it goes through the. Um, um, if you see up here on the, the top, if anybody can comment, it's um, HMC at FairfieldCT.org. That's our email. And that's the chair monitors that email, and that's how when we receive a permit from the state, it gets it gets sent to that email. Um, we get all sorts of uh, of questions. The last meeting, the, the gal who wondered whether the osprey nest at Penfield Light. Penfield Light had been removed. I mean, that we, you know, there, that that's that's the the official uh, communication um, voice of the commission, uh, a means of the commission. Um, on uh, last Friday, Don and I met with Jen Leeper. Um, this is, I did not include this because you, the, the agenda went out um, before the meeting. Um, we met with Jen Leeper to discuss the possibility of having, uh, whether the state would have any, any uh, way of funding uh, the repairs at the Lower Wharf. As you old members know and as you new folks will quickly learn, we have recently gotten a permit from DEEP to repair the docks, the piers, repair the wall, repair the grounds, and repair the uh, concrete rim, if you will, around the um, outer wall, upper, the upper outer wall of the lower wharf. Um, the permit would work, uh, was done by race. Uh, and RACE also provided us with a preliminary estimate of roughly $800,000. Wow. Um, the plan was originally to uh, approach the Connecticut Port Authority, um, which has a what they call a ship grant, which is a small harbor improvement project program. Um, the ship grant program, unfortunately, has been... Um, Stalled, stalled because the um, the Connecticut Port Authority is dealing with uh, auditors and other issues. So, um, though we would like to and have been encouraged by the Connecticut Port Authority officials to apply for that grant to pay for those repairs, uh, we can't apply for the grant because the program isn't 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 working, isn't ongoing, and so. Um, 
Don and I went to Jen Leeper and said, is there any possibility that the town would have some funds in order to get that work done? And she told us that the, the state, I think you meant to say. I'm sorry? That you, we did, we asked Jen Leeper about the state having some funds. The state having the funds, yeah. right. And, and um, she said, uh, the beauty of this project is that it's shovel ready. You have the permits, you have the plans, um, all you need is the money. So we're on a list. Uh, I'm not optimistic that we're at the top of the list. In fact, I know we're not at the top of the list, but um, she, she thought it was a great idea to, that, that we approached her. She also suggested that we reach out to Senator Huang, who is on the, the legislative uh, uh, the chair of the state bonding committee. Uh, Don has reached out to him uh, and that perhaps a, the combination of, of uh, the, the, the Senate and the House uh, delegations together could come up with some money. I might also add parenthetically that last February, uh, Bill Hurley and I attended the RTM uh, and at that RTM meeting, um, our plans uh, the SHIP grant, the DEEP permit, the scope of work were approved by the RTM. Um, so everybody is happy to have, a, have the work done. Uh, the only hang up is the $800,000. And the RTM did not at that meeting when they approved the plans, they approved the plans and gave us the go ahead with the understanding that somebody else would be paying for it. So we've now done with the state um, what we've done with the RTM. Everybody's happy. Jack, you're looking puzzled. I thought that they understood that 20% of it was going to be an obligation. Well, that was the that was the what the RTM. But they didn't say at that meeting that they would come up with the 20%. They understand that 20% has to come from somewhere. That the grant, at least the ship grant proposal, would only cover 80% of the work, 80% of the cost of the work. Was get the ship grant and then bring it back to the RTM and they fill the gap potentially. So, right, yeah. right, right, right. If the if the ship grant project uh, ever reemerges, yeah. and unfortunately the fellow who was the executive director of the Connecticut Port Authority and who was the one who encouraged us to apply for the ship grant and has been down at the lower wharf and walked around and said, yeah, this would be a great project for us to undertake, has been transferred to DOT and um, is no longer involved with the ship grant program. So not sure how that's going to play out. Um, on the 16th, I um, forwarded, on the 18th, sorry, on, on, on uh, that was yesterday, I forwarded the Siting Council letter to Senator Huang and Jennifer Leeper, uh, and they were both very happy to get it. So uh, and in the Siting Council letter of, uh, that we sent last month, um, we sent it on November 16, and the older, the, the older commissioners um, have a copy of that. We basically called attention, to, uh, the, the Siting Council, uh, called the attention of the Siting Council to the, our concerns about what um, any kind of construction along the Mill River, what kind of, it, our concern that it might have negative impacts on the quality of the water in the Mill River, um, especially given the fact that uh, it might also involve the, ex, the old XI property, and um, uh, we're not quite sure what digging up that dirt might do to the Mill River. So. So any questions? That's long-winded, but um, that's kind of where we are. Any questions? I have a bit of a, a new, new person question, mm -hmm. but as it relates to, like, the example you just gave of water quality in the, um, as a result of certain development that goes on around there, I imagine there's a lot of other town commissions that are also, you know, involved in that. So in general, what's the what's our role at HMC versus, you know, um, the planning and zoning, conservation, all the other folks that might have their fingers in the pie there? So well, we do what we've called, what's called a contingency review. And anybody who has any plans along the Mill River has to submit those plans to us, and we get to comment. Got it. 
Got it. it. Which doesn't mean that nobody else gets to comment either, but yeah. we are definitely. And it also doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, what was decided in this committee goes, it just then goes on to someone else in the town government to try and. Well, they, need, they the, need permits. They right. need permits, and very often they need permits from the DEP. Right. So they. They have to pay. They they got to look at all of that. Yeah, they have to look at all of various commissions. Yeah. So, so this yeah. commission doesn't actually rule, but it makes comment. Is that it? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Correct. And the <clears throat> one of the issues is if you've been following the news accounts, if the monopole becomes uh, the path that UI is takes, if if that does not get uh, reversed in some way yeah. or modified in some way, each of those monopoles requires a forty foot excavation. Right. So when you're excavating in excite property, which had been contaminated quite heavily mm -hmm. right. uh, years past, there's risks for contamination of the Mill River and other areas there. Right. Right. Yeah. Understood. Thank you. Mr. Harbormaster. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. A couple of items to report on since the last meeting. Uh, all the boats are out of the harbor successfully, and it's uh, <clears throat> become very empty very quickly. Uh, the, the chair already commented on the benches or bench request we received from the police and the meeting we had with the Army Corps of Engineers a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Mid-November, early to mid-November, I took one final set of depth uh, soundings mm -hmm. in the channel all the way in and into the harbor, particularly by Lower Wharf, and it looks the same, which is good uh, and bad at the same time because it looks the same. Uh, it's as narrow as it was, and it's gotten to the point now, as you know, anyone with the boat knows, that I wouldn't want to have my sailboat coming out if someone else's boat is coming in at low tide unless you have great confidence in everyone's steering ability and uh, coming in with a few feet of each other. It, it's narrow. It's narrow there. Um, uh, but, you know, they, they haven't, it hasn't gotten any narrower. It's just very narrow. Uh, renewals of moorings are all set to go out uh, midnight on January 1st, 12.01 a.m. on January 1st, 2024. We'll start the renewal process all over again. Knock on wood, I'm expecting it to go well this year as it did last year. Uh, a few boats have uh, grown up or changed size at the end of the season, and I've been corresponding with their owners about whether we can accommodate them, and that's our goal. Uh, you automatically don't get to have a bigger boat or a smaller boat, for that matter, if you change size, but we try to accommodate by adjusting moorings or you know tweaking it a little bit to make sure everyone gets to stay there. No drastic changes at this point in any boats. Um, uh, two weeks ago, we retrieved a uh, mooring float that escaped from somewhere, and it made it onto a uh, breakwater near the harbor management area. So I went out there, cut it off, brought it in. Uh, uh, so that was the excitement, if you call that excitement. <laughs> it was exciting for the homeowner. They were very concerned how it got there, and I said it floated, and it happens. And, you know, don't know where it came from, can't tell, but, that, you know. That's all that was out there. Uh, at the yacht yard, I took a look at the dinghy dock closely, and the ties uh, were getting uh, worn. Uh, as you know, the dock is flat, and it has pieces of lumber affixed to the top where one can tie their dinghies up to it. Yeah. So I talked to the town, and they've already uh, begun the process of replacing all of them to secure them so we don't have any loose dinghies next year breaking off. And uh, this past weekend... I went out and did mooring inspections. As for the new members, uh, we have three sets of moorings in the harbor. We have the North Anchorage, which is the furthest to the north, past Pequot Yacht Club. It's about five rows wide, and it goes in. That's something managed by the Yacht Club. Those are for their members. Uh, it's basically one permit they get for all of those, and they provide the information to me so I know all the boats on the moorings at any time. Uh, that's one section. The next section is the Helix area, and that's off of Perry Green. Um, and Helix is a different type of mooring. Instead of the traditional mushroom, it's something kind of bored into the, the bedrock at the bottom of the harbor. It's for the larger boats. That's why you'll see the large sailboats off of Perry Green. It's a more robust mooring. And remember, we have a, a kind of a unique situation in the harbor. We do bow stern moorings, but we also don't have a lot of scope coming up. We have enough for the tides, but our moorings go down. Otherwise, we'd fit half the boats if we did it like other harbors. So we have to make sure we have robust moorings because... You know, a mooring wants to sink in. It doesn't want to be pulled straight up and down like your anchor on your boat. It's much easier to break an anchor straight than having a long scope on it. The third section are all the town moorings on the west wall, uh, you know, the, the, the east and west side of the channels, mid wall, center wall, uh, Levy Smith area. It's all the other moorings. So every third year, 
one third of the moorings are either pulled or inspected. Obviously, we don't pull the helixes out. That was last year. But a diver goes down and inspects all of them. Uh, two years ago, it was the North Anchorage. This year, it is the town moorings. I call them the town moorings. So most of them were brought in. There's still some that were coming in. They were put over at Pequot Yacht Club. Pequot is the town's vendor, the commission's vendor for mooring maintenance, uh, for piers, installation and everything else in the harbor so we're lucky they've got a great vessel for that and they're right there all the time so when we have problems during the season and you'll always have boaters that either get their props tangled up in their mooring lines or visitors <coughs> cut a mooring line going across it not realizing what a bow stern mooring is they're right there for you know emergency calls they'll come out you know within moments of it happening when we call them to fix it to get it straightened out um, at the same time, they pulled all those moorings and put them at the yacht club for the winter. And I went down there and I, I flagged the ones I think that need to be replaced, whether it's a worn shackle, a problem with the chain, uh, a pin, something, a shaft is bent. And they go out there and well, and we'll look at them together and coordinate. They'll you know, probably have a few more we'll discuss whether we should do it now. The goal is obvious, not is, uh, as Jeff and I were talking about, is one is not to spend money unnecessarily. Number two is we don't want moorings dragging because we're a small channel, and I don't, you know, we don't want a million-dollar sailboat or powerboat to start dragging because it's mooring broke and taking out like a, you know, uh, pinball machine every other boat. So that's why it's important we do this. It's kind of a robust inspection, but it's important to keep the moorings in place and not to have the moorings drag at the same time. Make sure they're big enough, strong enough. And the club has very elaborate records, too, if you look at them, as to where we have our moorings. They can tell you within a foot where those moorings belong in the harbor so that we can put them back in the exact location because we have unique bottom conditions. We have slopes. We have rocks. We have poor holding. We have water coming out of the country club. We have currents, and we have to watch all that so we don't have moorings getting dragged during the summer. Again, we can't have the boats bunching up or anything. So we did the inspections. Uh, we'll coordinate with them over the winter. Uh, they'll replace the parts as necessary. A welder will come in as necessary to weld and fix what has to be fixed. Uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on the mooring balls. As you know, we started that replacement with the mooring floats themselves, uh, going instead of the round balls to the beer keg balls, if you will. They look like a beer keg with a flat top as opposed to a ball. That lets you do two things. One is if you have a pickup stick, it has a receptacle where you can put your stick there uh, if you want to. The second is it has a way to a uh, receptacle <coughs> take your mooring line and throw it in there when you're leaving or before you get there so it doesn't get uh, uh, slimed up and it's much easier to find when you come back as well. They seem to be working out well. They're reflectorized which makes it pretty easy to pick up at nighttime coming in and for other boats to avoid them. I like them and uh, I think it's a good way to, to head with the balls and we'll, balls will get moved around as necessary. You know, ones that start to sink and take on water will get replaced. New ones will be bought. That's kind of what we're doing now. The excitement begins January 1st when everyone wants to renew. Uh, but uh, it should be easier this year because we keep, you know, we've got to configure that we've got everyone's safe boating certificate. And you only need that once. So once we've got that, that was the hard thing two years ago, is getting people to find their certificates. And in some cases, take the class all over again because they couldn't find them. Um, and we have insurance. And, you know, I've told people to update the insurance as you get your new policy. So as long as you have an active policy, and, you know, you've taken your registration off the boat, like I've told you to do over the winter, and upload it right away. You should be able to renew pretty quickly this year, and then we'll just update as the season goes on when the new registration for, you know, 24, 25 comes out. So we're anticipating everything goes well. Any questions for the Harbor Master? And they have a new feature. They've changed the uh, online mooring. They've added something to the software where now I could take uh, – through the software website and run any boat registration and find out whose boat it is instantly, which is very helpful when there's something up with a boat and, you know, you need to know whose boat is that on a mooring. Is that someone just, you know, took his buddy's boat there for the day that I should know about or some fisherman or if there's a boat in trouble sinking, very quickly you can find out whose it is. That's a nice feature of online mooring. And online moorings, you know, we have a vendor, online mooring. That's how, uh, that's how everything is done electronically. There's no more paper copies. It's all an electronic database of all the boats, where they are, owner's information, all the renewal documents to their registration, insurance, safe boating certificate. So it's all done online, which is pretty neat. Any questions? Yeah. And I, I, speaking of online mooring, Jack, who has just rotated off, is largely responsible for getting that up and running. 
um, it was a very difficult, time-consuming process because the online mooring package didn't em envision all of the intricacies of our mooring rules. So Jack spent hours and hours and hours making sure that the system um, acknowledged and worked so that we, um, we can, Brian can now send out notices on January 1st um, easily and um, know with confidence that the information that's coming back in is the right information and the good information and the system works uh, the way the way we wanted to, not the way it was was designed. So. And it always comes up to the annual training. Whenever there's a training seminar, Southport always comes up. Usually, it's an example on the screen where they make a comment that the folks in Southport have highly configured this for our harbor, <laughs> and we can do that for you folks too if you don't like the way it came out. They made lots of changes to make it really work for them, and it works great, I think. Yeah, it does work great. So, so we all owe Jack a big big thanks for that tedious, time-consuming work. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I apologize to everybody. I should have gone around the table. I got, jumped right into my chairman's report, making it about me instead of about you guys. So why don't we just start here with uh, Don Hyman and introduce yourselves. And are, are you a new member, an old member? Um, you know, anything you want to add? Um, Hi, I'm Don Hyman. <laughs> thank you all for coming. And I'm humbled by the lady next to me mm -hmm. and the role we've been talking about. But um, in any event, I, I, I'm entering my, I think, third year on the commission. And um, I was at breakfast with some friends today, and they said, well, why are you doing all that work? And I said, <laughs> I said I've lived in Fairfield for you know, over 40 years. I've had 40 years of a love affair with Southport Harbor. It's time to get back a little bit, you know, and I think that's probably something you all feel the same way about. The harbor's been good to me in a hundred different ways, and uh, I can do this. Hi, I'm Chris Smith. I was uh, duly sworn in about an hour before the meeting. <laughs> it took a all of 35 seconds, um, but I'm glad to be here. Like Don, I've, I've been... Uh, just a, a big user of this harbor for all these 30, 40 years, and, and uh, I love it uh, to my core and want to help to see it uh, go on in its future as it has been going. I'm Doug Metchik. Um, I'm, I, in my mind, I think I'm one of the newer commissioners on the commission, but I think I'm getting a little bit older with it. I've been a commissioner since 2021 and an alternate before that. Um, resident of Fairfield, a voter in Fairfield, and similar reasons to Chris and Don. Um, our family uses Southport Harbor in, in every way that comes up on our strategic plan. We we walk there, we enjoy it, uh, we boat there, um, we're in the waters or up on the river. So um, it's a very important way for us to give back and participate in the town. George Harris, I was an alternate uh, this past year and now a full member as of last night, I guess, on the RTM truck. And I've been a long-time Fairfield resident and recently retired and looking to contribute in a little way uh, somehow. And I've been uh, on the water quite a bit. I'm Belinda Shepard. Um, I am an alternate, uh, just like Chris. I got sworn in today, most efficient. Um, I've had the very, very good fortune to enjoy, use, and um, be the beneficiary of the beauty of Southport Harbor. So like everybody here, I owe, I owe it my time to be helpful in every way. Um, I've only been in Fairfield for four weeks, so unlike many others here, but it, I've had a good 30 years of um, enjoying what Fairfield offers and the harbor. So. Time to give back also. Jack Hirschler, I started as an alternate. I'm now rotating off the commission as a full commissioner um, after serving out my term. Um, I've enjoyed being a, a Harbor Management Commissioner a great deal. I've learned a ton. Um, you have to be a sponge in the beginning because there are so many acronyms and things to learn, but um, the the commission is blessed to have just just Edmund as our enduring uh, consultant, and he's just the glue that holds this commission together through years and years of turnover of commissioners and changing of command. But Jeff uh, has all the history and background to share with you, and and it's it's 
very, very interesting to learn about. It's true. It's true. Um, in any case, I've enjoyed my time, and I hope all of you new folks uh, enjoy your time as well and soak up all the information that you can get here. Thanks. Um, Mike Baisley, um, longtime resident of Fairfield. Uh, it's funny that you uh, mentioned about, uh, you know, why do you volunteer for these things? Because as soon as I mentioned it to my kids, they were all like, do you get paid for that? Like, what does that work? <laughs> why, why are you doing it if you don't get paid? So, <laughs> and I, well, I, I, think I, had, I had a similar, uh, similar answer in the sense that, you know, long-time resident, I'm not a boater. Um, I live in the Stratfield section of town, but my daughters and I have spent a ton of time around Southport Harbor, whether it was fishing down there by the Tide Mill um, Dam or, you know, just um, or off the uh, off other parts of South Southport, and uh, I have a bird watcher in the family, so we've been doing uh, ecological tours around the Sasco Brook and the Sawmill River areas. So um, spent a lot of time down there, and just was looking for an opportunity to get back to the town. Uh, John Dean, I'm the deputy harbor master. I'm, I'm always here to help Ryan. Mm -hmm. Needs me to left. Uh, I guess an important thing was I, I got l trained a little bit on the online uh, mooring app, uh, but there's still a lot more to learn from me on it. This will be John's first season with the renewal process. We're going to learn the rest of it as we go through it uh, on the laptop. I'm Brian Leclerc. I'm the Harbor Master, beginning my third year. Uh, this is not a full-time job for either John or myself. I'm a lawyer by trade full-time. This is uh, basically a volunteer position, you know, with this, uh, appointed by the governor, uh, but a great, like my dream position, I think, in Fairfield. I was on the RTM. I was on the uh, zoning commission. Uh, I've done things for decades in the town and uh, love the harbor like all of you folks do. And this is a true gem for us to preserve and maintain. So I enjoy that. Uh, I encourage you, the new members in particular, look at the website. There are some amazing uh presentations, PowerPoint that the, the commission and, and uh, uh, the, the Jeff's put together. Uh, uh, they're just amazing for you to learn about the history of the harbor. We have one of the oldest uh, jetties in the country. You know, it used to be, it talks about the commercial history of that harbor, you know, when the onion boats came in and the tall ships and the shipbuilding. It, it's quite exciting. And if any of you want to come out during boating season, I've got a, uh, a large 13-foot Boston whaler, which, <laughs> which uh, I could take you around the harbor if you want to get a water's view of anything from Perry's Green to Lower Wharf to, you know, past the uh, Yacht Club all the way up uh, to Tide Mill. We can go out there and we can, you know, learn a little bit about the harbor and the harbor management area, which goes all the way from Sasco, Brook, and Westport out to the buoy off of, uh, I'll call it off of South Pine Creek and everything in there. Uh, and if you want to go Pine Creek as well, you know, we can go up the creek itself and to show you that part of the Fairfield coastline all the way up to by near this building, uh, Public Works. So it's, it's kind of uh, cool. There's a lot to learn. I think you're right, a lot of acronyms, but uh, that's, that's me. Um, Jeff Warren, I've uh, been on the uh, commission for about two, two years, mostly as an alternate. <clears throat> I've also been a heavy user of uh, Southport Harbor for 35 years. and. Um, so I had a dental practice in, in uh, Fairfield for about uh, almost 40 years. I'm retired now. Um, so I think the phrase I like is that there are three phases of life. You learn, you earn, and then you return. So um, now's my chance to, to return. So. Uh, I'm Kim Taylor. I've been on the commission for eight years, four of them as chair. Um, I Everything I know, I learned from Jeff. Um, and... Uh, I, I, like Brian, I urge all the new folks to not only um, uh, look at the presentations and the survey, uh, but take a look at the Harbor Management Plan, which is really um, the guiding, uh, has the guiding principles of, um, of governance uh, of the harbor. And um, it's, I've, I've enjoyed my, my eight years, um, both working with other commissioners and uh, and uh, having an impact, um, small though it is, um, it's been very satisfying. And I, I hope all of you new folks uh, and the returning folks uh, continue to um, to uh, do do good things for the harbor. Um, and and before we conclude, uh, why don't we go behind Jack Betty? You want to introduce yourself? 
Betty Gabriel. I've been doing your minutes for, I don't know, 10. A long time. Over 15 years. Yeah, a long yeah. time. Wow. Welcome wow. to the new commissioner. And I work closely with this one again. Yeah. Who knows? Okay. Betty is not just the person who does the minutes. I'm sorry, can, can you please reposition yeah, yeah. that mic? Sorry, we're losing, we're losing yep, Betty. Yep. It's coming, it's coming. Mike just got passed over. No, just, just to correct Thank you. Thank you. She's not just the person who takes the minutes. She's right. the administrator of the commission's business. So all of, all of the accounts, all of the, the correspondence, all of the interactions with the municipal officials and, and the town hall, that, that's, that's Betty. What, what she does. That's Betty. Thank you. Uh, hey, Bill? Yes. Why don't you introduce yourself, even though we can't oh, good see evening, you? Every, yeah, sorry. Good evening, everyone, and my apologies for not meeting you in person. My name is Bill Perugini. I'm a 23-year resident of the Fairfield Beach area. Uh, I'm going into my fourth year, I believe, on the Harbor Management Commission. Has served as secretary, uh, part of the leadership of two neighborhood coastal organizations, a member of the Coast Guard Auxiliary as a staff officer, and I have been involved like like the harbor master with the RTM for a number of terms over the last 10 years. And I could tell you that of all that I've done in the town of Fairfield, I find this role the most fulfilling, the most enjoyable. We've got a great crew, no pun intended. And I truly believe that the harbor is a jewel, not only for the village of Southport, for the town of Fairfield. So look forward to meeting all of you folks in person. Sorry, I can't be there this evening and uh, welcome to the commission. Thanks, Bill. Dave Henry, are you still on the line? Uh, I am. Hello, everyone. Uh, Dave Henry, I was an alternate for the last few months, uh, and I guess once I get sworn in, I'll be official as a full member of the uh, commission. But, uh, yeah, I've also enjoyed, um, uh, I heard the sponge comment, that's how I've tried to be, and I've been quiet but listening over here, uh, also a strat fielder. Um, so, uh, definitely love our coastline. I run the aqua school as well, uh, in Black Rock, where we've got, uh, Fairfield kids learning about the waterways and, um, navigation, uh, thereof, uh, on a daily basis. So it's, uh, I don't know, natural fit for me to be part of this commission and, um, yeah, I'm, uh, honored to do so and, uh, serve the town that, yeah, I've been a, a lifetime resident other than my four years away at college. So, um, look forward to meeting everyone in person come January as well. So, uh, and a great uh, happy holidays to everybody, too. Great, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, now we all know each other. Uh, turning to old business, report of the nominating committee, Doug? Sure. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, as we talked about, um, some of our commissioners are turning over, and that's resulted in three vacant uh, slots and also some of our alternate commissioners, as we've just heard, have agreed to move into commissioner roles. Um, at the last meeting, we talked about the fact that the nominating committee had made a uh, recommendation to the first selectman's office for uh, new commissioners for appointment. Uh, the selectman's office has made that decision, and uh, the new commissioners, and as folks may recall at the last meeting, we did not reveal any names of recommendations to new commissioners so that the process could uh, do its thing. But so we have uh, three new commissioners, uh, as you just heard, George Harris, Dave Henry, and, and Chris Smith, and two new alternates with Belinda Shepard and Michael Baisley. So welcome, everybody. Um, I believe all of the commissioners have been sworn in, based on what we heard, although Dave, maybe not yet, correct? Dave, not yet. So uh, almost all the commissioners have been sworn in at this point with one to go. And so I, I think I may need some help with this, um, Ken, but at our, at our last meeting, the nominating committee made a recommendation of the following slate of officers for 2024, which is Don Hyman as chairman, George Harris as vice chairman, and Bill as secretary. Uh, the recommended slate was um, approved, but still needs to be voted on. Uh, I don't think we can vote until Dave is sworn in, or are we in a position where we can vote? I checked with Jen Carpenter. She says you can vote as long as you have a quorum of the current member, the new commission's members, which you do. One, two, three, four, five. Right? We have five. We have. Um, we, George is a new member. 
you're a current member. Chris is a new member, so we have two new members and one current. Don is a current member, so that's two new. We have three with Jeff Warren, as so three new members and three current members. Mm -hmm. Right, because Bill's on the Bill's on the phone. All of whom are sworn. Right, and Bill's all on of the whom phone are sworn in. So we have three current members who are attending, and we have three people who have been sworn in within the last 24 hours. We only have one who has not been sworn in. Oh, so right. we have we have more than a quorum. So yeah, we have plenty. Yeah. Okay. Well, so so on that basis, and then I'll I'll, I'll repeat. Um, at the last meeting, the nominating committee had made a recommendation for a slate of officers in 2024. That is Don Hyman as chairman, George Harris as vice chairman, and Bill, Ker Bill Pergini as secretary. Um, that recommendation was uh, approved by the Heart Management Commission and needs to be voted on. With a quorum here, I would make a motion that we do vote on the slate of officers for 2024, as just stated. Okay, so... so Point of vote. So Doug has moved. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Don seconds. So we have some discussion since many people don't know everybody who's on the slate. Any questions by any of the commissioners for any about to any of the? I mean, Chris? for us, for those who are just coming on. Correct. We don't have the local knowledge really to make that judgment one way, the left or right. Right. I mean, and I, I would sort of default to those who have that local knowledge, uh, you know. And, and um, but there is another way to approach it. Might be to have, you know, and you know, perhaps maybe you have an interim uh, a group of officers until such time as you you have uh, greater knowledge. But well, I, that, that absolutely makes a lot of sense. But we are charged with having a slate of officers to the town clerk by the end of January. Right. In other words, so everything everything that gets done here tonight in terms of officers and or meeting dates and meeting times becomes goes up on the website and that's our that's our kind of our Bible. That's our that's our thing. That's our our our, time, our meeting times, our meeting dates, uh, our meeting uh, people in charge of the meeting for the next year. So we could put it off for a month if that would make you feel more comfortable, but we that's January 16th would sort of be the end. Uh, personally, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I, I, as I said, okay. I, I lean towards the local knowledge. Okay. Um, but a bit, I did, just from, from the standpoint of discussion. But in terms of onboarding and understanding the processes, this is a, this is a term of two years? It's a term of one year. Okay. Every, every uh, November, uh, the commission... Uh, comes up with a not, appoints a, the, the chair appoints a nominating committee. The nominating committee, at least in my experience, calls everybody on the commission and says, "What are you are you interested in being an officer?" And and from there, a slate is put together and proposed. It's voted on at the December meeting, and that then takes effect going forward. And the committees, the various different committees. Well, there's only one committee. The stand the standing committee, according to our rules, is the mooring committee. The other committees vary depending on what are what are they're ad hoc. Yeah, yeah. I mean currently currently we have we have in addition to the mooring committee, we have a plan update committee which hasn't met in a while because we're waiting for some things to happen. Um, and um, dredging. Jeff and I have sort of been unofficially doing dredging uh, and and lower wharf has been Don and George. And I would hope, and, and it's not my call, but going forward that everybody, every commissioner is affiliated with a committee going forward. But I, that's, that's not my call at all. It may well be that Lower Wharf gets to be an ongoing committee mm -hmm. like the Harbor, like the Mooring Morning Committee has been because we have operational management responsibility for that Lower Wharf area at the mm -hmm. commission. It, you raise a very good question now. Is there is there provision within our Brian? Perhaps you know. Is there provision for interim officers? In, in, at a, versus yeah, I haven't looked at our rules, but typically you elect your officers on an annual basis, yeah. who then serve until their successors are elected and duly qualified. Yeah, I think uh, the legality of that is uh, I'm not sure. 
but um, I think it's a good idea. Jeff has his hand raised. Jeff Stedman, you have the well, mic. I, I have a microphone. I, I don't think that the commission has ever prepared bylaws for, for its operation, which it has the ability to do. Which, is, which, which could set out the responsibilities of standing committees and you know, when ele officers are to be elected. And so that, that's something you might want to consider in, in the, uh, other municipal commissions and, and harbor management commissions have, have such bylaws. And, and that specifies how, how, they, how they operate in, in terms of all these standing committees and ad hoc committees and who appoints them. And uh, it, it's something to consider. We've, we've never we've never done that. Right, that's true. We've never done that. And that would that could set forth the responsibility of the nominating committee and, and the times and so and, and so forth for recommendations. Absolutely. It's a good point though that because of the timing, you end up with new commissioners yeah. being asked to vote on a slate of folks who they've just been introduced to. It. And unfortunately, that's always going to happen right. because if you mm -hmm. look at one year term, everybody's term expires November. in November. Right. So that it's oh, and if you have to vote in December, you're always going to have new folks no. voting on voting for people that they've never met before. Right. And so you know the the idea, people. the idea of bylaws or some other way to proceed with, with but still having to meet the requirements of the town code. Um, yeah. yeah. But you need to have somebody who, in those roles, knows the processes in the background. Yeah. And the exactly. Local so there's Correct. a combination of experience and demonstrated interest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not just spiritual. I, mean, I do uh, municipal law as my primary area of practice, and every town is elected councils, working select persons, and aldermen. You know, they've done it over the last month or so, and they're all electing their officers. You know, 20, 30, 40, 50 people who have never met before as a body you have to elect an officer at the first meeting in the next in a couple yeah. of years. So it's just the quirky way that. I'm sorry, I'm, Brian, can you can you move the microphone a little I'm, closer? I'm sorry. Please? Jeff, check it on me. <laughs> I'm just saying that in, in the municipal arena, this is something, you know, as a municipal attorney, we've been doing the last month as, you know, throughout the state as different aldermen, selectmen, uh, town councils have all been elected. The first thing they do at their first meeting, having gotten together for the first time as a new body with all new people, is elect their leadership. So it's kind of a, an essential part of the local government, really. Uh, yeah, th thank you. And, you know, fair, fair point raised. This is Bill Ferragini. And I believe that concern came up as we worked through the eligible candidates for the current slate. It was really only comprised, of, well, only three were, were eligible, Don, uh, Doug, and myself. And that concern had emerged that we were selecting from a talent pool that only represented the minority of the commission, which is comprised of a total of nine commissioners. I guess I would, I would ask, Jeff Stedman to elaborate on what the best practices are from his perspective relative to assembling a nominating committee and also selecting a slate of officers relative to what other municipalities typically do. Well, I, I, to, to can't comment on, on the process here, but it is it, Brian mentioned, uh, every town, every municipal commission goes through the process of, of electing officers and selecting officers. And my experience in the other towns is that there is a nominating committee, just as, as here, that the, ch the chair appoints the nominating committee. And I think, Doug, you, used, you had some good terms, uh, experience and demonstrated interest. And then the nominating committee will, will, will uh, take different, well, from different ways of doing it could present a slate of officers, and then there's always the opportunity for, for additional nominations to be made from the floor. Um, and also the committee could, could present just who, who is interested in being considered for each, each position, and then th those persons are voted on at, at a meeting. So there's different ways of doing it, but the, the main thing is just that, that it's a fair process and, and uh, everybody understands it. Um, so this is the way it's, it's operated here. But, but it's not not it's what other towns do um, either present a slate of officers or or candidates for for each position and then also there's there's always the opportunity to to nominate someone from the floor if a, if a slate of officers just in stratford last last week Brian went through the same 
same process. The uh, nominating committees pre pre presented a slate of recommended officers, and then there was an opportunity for, uh, for additional nominations to be made from the floor. To the harbor management or water fund and harbor management. Yes. Where in that town, the town council, for instance, doesn't do a nominating committee. Uh, last Monday, they had a meeting where of the new body where 10 nominations came right from the floor. So you can do it either way. You know, do it both ways. They do it both ways within the same town. You know, whether you have a nominating committee for a certain board or commission or whether you don't. So you've got flexibility of how you want to do this part of your business. And there were criteria to be fair and, and uh, well, anyway, just what we said. Just and, and, and again, just for the benefit uh, of the group, and I believe this is reflected in the minutes that we approved earlier in the meeting, but this, this was discussed at the last meeting uh, in, in detail, um, but there could be no vote on officers until the commissioners were sworn in. And so the sequential part of it, and we were trying to get that in this year, so that is those who came in. So um, that's uh, how we've landed where we are. Um, I don't know if we've actually completed the vote or not. I know there was a motion and a second. We have uh, not. We we're discussing. Shot. We're so discussing. Yeah. And Don, you've got your hand up? Yeah. Um, I'm part of that minority small pool of, of eligible people, and I'm, I'm honored to be considered for this. And I just want to say, if elected, um, uh, I think the idea of looking at bylaws uh, and coming up with procedures that would perhaps enhance where we are right now and improve that is an excellent idea. And if elected, that would be something that I would encourage. And maybe, yeah. maybe we get uh, bylaws from some of the other commissions and use that as a template to, to yeah. just get the ball rolling. <clears throat> Belinda. Yeah. Um, may I ask who is on the nominating committee? The nominating committee was Doug mm -hmm. and Don. Okay. Thank you. Very small group. Yeah. We are a small group. We are a small group. Yeah. We are a small group. And the um, and, and, and I think that that was the challenge that we faced. We only had three members at that time, so essentially two thirds, if not mistaken, of that outgoing commission were selected to be the to function of the nominating committee. But we had such a small pool. Maybe to be more inclusive to the entire group of the incoming commissioners and to harness the collective talent, perhaps we should perhaps discuss opening it to the others um, or opening the committee or, or perhaps just reflecting upon how to move forward relative to the criteria and the possible nominations. So are you suggesting, Bill, that we open it up for nominations? If we aim to be more inclusive with the new base of talent, so we just increased our commission by seven, if not mistaken, or six, maybe we should open that for discussion. Well, we are discussing. We're in the discussion phase. We have a motion. We have a motion to 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 vote on the, the proposed slate, and we're discussing whether or not we want to proceed with that. Yeah, and in fairness, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those proposed of, of the three eligible, so just in, in full disclosure, right. but. Right, so do you want do you want to nominate yourself for an office? You know, I was initially interested in moving up from secretary to vice chair of the commission, but I was, that was not accepted. So I, I, I would be interested. Um, um, and, and ultimately it was, you know, it was, I was, I was uh, encouraged to remain as secretary, but at, at, at that point, I, w I was interested in, in perhaps moving up to vice chair, but was not allowed to submit my candidacy. Well, do you want to submit your candidacy? I, I would. I would. Okay. So we now have a slate that reflects Don Hyman for chair, two candidates for vice for vice chair, and no one for secretary, unless there's someone that wants like to. If I might suggest mm -hmm. procedurally how you may yeah. want to do this is yeah. open up the floor to nominations for chair first, uh, elect your chair, and then go vice chair, and then go secretary. Okay, in that order. we can do that. You can open up the floor for nominations, having one nomination and ask if there are any other, 
if there are any others, and if there are no others, you take the vote. If there are two people or three or whatever nominated for a position, you can then go around the room and uh, uh, and, and you, can, you do two ways you can do this. One is to take the first person nominated, see how many people are in favor. If that person gets the majority, they are now elected. The alternative, alternative is to have the X number of people running go around the table and tell them who you're voting for and whoever gets the more votes wins. So it's your call on how you want to conduct that, but I think okay. you have to pick one at a time. It is procedurally how I would recommend Okay, you so... But I'm just the harbor master, so... Well, you're also an expert <laughs> on Robert's Rules of Order, so I'm going with that. I'm going with that for sure. So, so to be clear, we now have a slate that includes... Uh, one and well, oh, uh, let me open it up. Open is, the there any, is there anybody else besides Don who would like to be chair of the commission? Would like to nominate someone for chair, whether it's himself or someone else. Anybody want to nominate someone else for chair? So we have Don Hyman. And there's a second. Is there a second? Is there a second for Don Hyman? Second. Chris, second. Are there any other nominations? And hearing no other nominations. And we have no other nomination. To avoid all in favor. All in favor of Don Hyman as chair. Uh, aye. Aye. We have one, two, three, four. Are you voting? I vote. Yeah. I vote. We have yes. five commissioners. Did you, I think you, no, you have one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Yeah. Right, five commissioners. Uh, uh, Madam Chairwoman, I'm in purgatory over here, being sworn in but not sworn in or what have you, so I'm not sure yeah. if I vote. Uh, you can't let me vote. Know if you need me. Sorry. Okay, that's yep. what I thought. Until you're, yep, yep, until you're, but we appreciate your, meeting. appreciate your participation. <laughs> Absolutely. So would you like, so we've got, are you nominating George for vice chair? I am. So Doug is, is Doug. nominating George for vice chair. Bill, are you nominating yourself? Madam Chairwoman. I need a second. I, a second. I, John seconds. Any other nominations for vice chair? Bill? I, excuse me? Are you, you can nominate yourself. Are you nominating yourself for vice chair? Uh, yes, I will. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in a bad area here. But uh, yes, okay. I would. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Jeff seconds? Okay. So we have of the commissioners who can vote. I'd ask if there's any more nominations. Any more nomination? The vice chair. Okay, so we go around the room and you cast your ballot. Don? I cast, I cast my ballot for George Harris. George Harris. George Harris. George Harris. Mm -hmm. I vote for Bill. Okay. So what we have, what we have is Bill. We have four well, votes and, for George. And Bill can vote too. Well, Bill. Bill voted. Yeah. He did. Two. Well, I'm counting on him voting for himself since he, he nominated be, himself oh, and yeah. he's in, in a bad zone. Bill, are you mm -hmm. there? I'm sorry. Yes, I'm. I'm back. I'm sorry. I, I keep filling in and out. Okay. So we just went around the table. We have four votes for George Harris for vice chair. We have two votes for Bill Perugini for vice chair. So George Harris is vice chair. Wins Congratulations. Vice chair. Okay, for secretary, do I have any nominations for secretary? Doug? Uh, yeah, the nominee would like to nominate Bill Perugini for okay. secretary. Bill, you're nominated for secretary. Can I have a second? I second that. Don seconds it. <coughs> Let's go, any, any other nominations? Any other questions for secretary? All those in favor of Bill Perugini for secretary? Aye. Aye. One, two, three, four, five. Five votes for secretary, Bill. Aye. 
he can also vote for himself. He can vote for himself, so I assume he'll get six votes, assuming he's voting for himself. Okay, so we have our slate of officers for 2024. Any questions? Any concerns? Okay. Congratulations, everybody. Congratulations, everybody. Yeah. The work starts tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to old business. Uh, lower wharf repairs. Mr. Stedman, we have uh, some a report from Thank you. Race and Deep, I believe. I spoke with Mr. Santa, who is the principal of Race Coastal Engineering, and they've been working for the commission to get the permits needed to restore the lower wharf. And uh, there was, a, I guess you might say, maybe miscommunication, but the, the permit that we have from, I shouldn't say that, but the, the permit we have from Deep does not include at this time restoring the North Pier. So it was, I think everyone agreed that we should, maybe we won't have the money to restore it, but we should at least have the opportunity to do that and the permit to do that. So now race is, is continues to discuss with deep how to what what sort of approval is necessary to be able to restore the North Pier. Is it a, is it a simple certificate of permission or is it a full permit that, that will be needed? And when I spoke with Mr. Santa today, he still has, has not gotten the final answer from deep as, as to what 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 is needed. Um, so he hopes to have the answer by in January. And we haven't called deep ourselves to to, to discuss this. We, it, it, we don't want to butt into their in, into race's role, and they, and they certainly know what what they're doing. So we're waiting to see what and and then depending on the type of of approval necessary, either a certificate, which is is not as lengthy and and, and uh, involved, or a permit. Uh, Race will, will provide us with a with a cost proposal for, for doing that work. So hopefully we'll have that for uh, in, in the, at the January meeting. And Mr. Santa said he he couldn't attend tonight right, because of right, a conflict, right, yeah, I but he will attend in, right. in January. Right, right. So that's so, where that stands. So for new folks, the original permit that Deep granted us in March was for the four, the 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 wall, the southern pier. The, the concrete and the sinkholes, but it was not for the northern pier. Sorry, no, no, it did, no, not, it did not include the northern no, pier. Now, this is, of course, the, different than it is now because the, the decking has all been removed right, for safety purposes. since the storm last so, year. So this is what we're trying to figure out what we need to get approval to repair. That's yeah, place got there. it. Thank you. So the 800,000 cost estimate does not include the work on the northern pier. Yes, sir. On the northern pier. But we may have to readjust that, the, the construction cost estimate too, because that was oh, of course o over a year ago. Oh, it was 20 so August 2022. Mm -hmm. So just just to clarify yeah. though, for yeah. the new people yeah. that are in the room, directionally speaking, the the northern pier is the pier that did not have decking on it right. previously or in the last few years anyway. Right. right. And then the southern pier is the pier that had decking on it and was damaged in the storm a year ago. Right. Okay. So currently there's no pier at all, but when we're talking about the northern right. and Thank the southern, you. Yeah. Right. that pier was only, <clears throat> half of it had decking on it, half of it did not. Okay. And that's why. We're really talking about restoring what was there before. <coughs> the what's that? I'm sorry? Only restoring what was damaged by the storm and what was there. The north area didn't have anything at the time of the storm. Correct. But we're getting Correct. approval. To, we're to, seeking approval to restore it, including that. Oh, oh, oh. And, 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 and with, with, a, with a decision to be made so, later about whether to actually yeah. do that. Okay. Whether we can monetize it or not, we want the approval. We want the Correct. approval exactly. for the whole Correct. thing. Correct. And then right. Correct. To determine how much Correct. we can do. Yeah. Just to show you what you're looking at for the new members. Yeah. <laughs> this is the uh, country club here. The, the sound is out this way to the bottom. This is the breakwater. This is Harbor Road coming to the end of it. Again, this is the yacht yard up at the top with the dinghy dock. The yacht club is up in this direction and all the moorings. Well, the moorings, you can't see many of them, but just a few of them. That's the, just in landward of, of the piers that we're talking about, that nice 
clean concrete cap over there <laughs> is covering stones that are very old and are falling apart. So if you go out there, there's repairs underneath. The cap itself needs to be repaired, but underneath there's stonework that is a significant part of this work as you're right repairing that wall so that the whole thing doesn't collapse. It's a good spot right? to go at low tide. You know, take yourselves out there at low tide, park in your yacht yard, walk, because you could walk all the way around here at low tide now, and you'll get a good visual of both how narrow the channel is and also what Jack is talking about, the, the undermining in that area, how yeah, bad that area giant is. giant holes in that wall. Right. Oh, God. And on the northerly side, too, it's all. Oh, right. Yeah, all right. yeah the, the wall, it needs to be needs to be repaired. Right. Mr. Stedman, are we on the clock with the permits that we've already obtained? I mean, will they expire at some point? In six or six years or so, and then with the provision for uh, oh, okay. renewal. So we're not we're not so we have some time. Not, yeah. We're worried about that right now. Super. Any other questions? <laughs> How narrow is the channel? <laughs> well, it's a lot narrower than it is in that thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah you, you'll see it if you go down there at low tide. It, 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 it's, vision, it's narrow enough at low tide that uh, if you have two boats, you know, 35 feet or bigger, with beaming, you know, 8, 10, 12 foot beams, They're, they would be barely able to pass, pass close enough that you could, you know, hand a sandwich over to the boat coming so by. It's like 30 feet wide or something. Yeah, it's narrow. Yeah, it is. And you can't stray too close because you can get pretty close to the country club side because it drops off steeply. But as you come past uh, this area in here, oh, it's you've got to be careful. Right. Because, uh, yeah. You know, I'm on the bottom with the whaler <laughs> taking soundings. I was skirting the edge of this, and it yeah. comes out a little bit, and I, I bumped the whaler into it. Uh, so it's narrow. So, and you can see how you know high tide yeah. come up to there. Yeah. It's 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 a close call now. You almost you, most people are yielding to other boats. Yeah. And part of the problem is you've got uh, you got uh, ideals. You got sailboats without engines that have to sail out of there, and that's tricky for them. As I, boats come in, we all have to go and I do know that wait problem. To let the sailboats go out. So, yeah. We actually in the fall tried to measure it on, on my yeah, boat, which is yeah. a 19 foot outboard skiff. Yeah. And so we took the, the upward engine of the boat to the bigger facing that way, and it was less than two boat lengths. Wow. You know, at low tide. Yes. Yeah. Well. No. That happens twice a day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's well, good to know the work. That's the best time to take the measurement, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other questions about lower wharf repairs? Uh, lower wharf ship grant refund, Mr. Stedman. <clears throat> I haven't, we haven't submitted the refund yet, but we're close to it, and we've discussed this with the executive director of the Port Authority, and they're not yelling at us to, to give it back uh, at, at this point. Great. We, we, for, for the new members, we received a grant from, this, from the Connecticut Port Authority that was going to cover dredging in the area around the south docks at the town boatyard. And then for reasons beyond our control, we could not do that project because the material is... is, is uh, compromised or contaminated and it required capping or being sequestered by dredge material from another project. And over the last several years there have been no other projects in Long Island Sound that could serve as, as the cap. So then we decided that it was made more sense to, to focus our efforts on the repair of the pier and, and the wall without any assurances that we could even do the dredging project. But the way that the, the monies were allocated by a specific action of the Connecticut Bond Commission for the purpose of dredging, we had to return the money that wasn't spent. And that's what we're going through the, the, the accounting for the purpose of, of doing now. And then, of course, we can, at first we, we had asked if we could simply transfer that money or repurpose it to the work on, on, the, on the wall. And at first we were told that we could work on the wall and the pier. But then when they looked more carefully at the regulations or requirements of the Bond Commission, we had to, we have to return it. And then we apply for another grant to to, uh, to to do that work if, in fact, the grant program continues. So it it's, so it sounds tedious, but we're we're working on it, and no one's yelling at us that we haven't done what we're supposed to do. And they, they, the port authority knows the, the diligence that the commission is mm -hmm. applying to do to do all this work. But, but, you know, you that. That Super. Um, <laughs> th thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Um, one thing that I would add for the, for the new commissioners is 
concept of putting a cap material over the dredge material on the surface seems fairly simple, but what is eligible cap is fairly complicated. I would encourage any of you to spend some time with Jeff to understand that process in terms of why there was not eligible cap material to, to complete the project. It's a longer subject than I would take the time in the meeting, but it's worth talking about. I know it, it sounds sometimes simple, but nothing seems to be simple. It's just complex. And you asked about the dredging of that spit of sand, uh, and you'd think it would be an easy thing to do, but we've only been working on it since 1987. And when we, <laughs> when we had the, the original funding from the federal government to dredge the entire harbor, we had the money that this was in 2004 and 5 with the new members to, to dredge the whole harbor, including restoring the 100 foot wide federal channel into which that sand, sand spit is encroached. But we could not do that in this deep Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, although it was the, just the Department of Environmental Protection then, would not agree to it because, they're, they're, because of the presence of threatened species of plants growing on, this, on the top of it. Uh, where well, we had the money to do it now, again, make, not just to go on, but for, for the new members, yeah. we're working with the Corps of Engineers to restore the, the full 100-foot width of the of the channel. That that's our project. That's our project now, and that will cut back a distance into the into the the uh, the, the spit. Uh, the other thing that is that affected our ability to to do this in the past was the nesting of piping plovers, which are a federally <coughs> listed endangered species on, on the top. So there's, there's all sorts of complications, but we now have what we think is a, is a, a valid or, or a, a, a good project to, to, to restore the 100-foot channel. And you mentioned the narrowness of, of the channel. And we're talking now about the authorized, federally authorized channel, which has specific coordinates and a specific location. And we've known for years, and the Corps has, that, that, the, that the, the reduced width to at least half of the author at most stages of the tide does not meet the Corps of Engineers' requirements for the passage of two boats of the, of the size that use the harbor now. So it doesn't meet that requirement. That's another argument for, for, for doing the work. But again, you could say, what have you been doing for the last 30 plus years? But we're hopefully getting. Closer. Here we are. And then, then there's also the issue of what to do with. Oh, I'm picking, what is, what to do with the, with the material to be excavated or, or dredged, because it's sandy material, this is. So deep does not allow that to just be deposited in Long Island Sound. It has to have a beneficial use. The town has ex excavated twice material from the side slope of that and has put it on town beaches, which is that they put it into trucks and moved it along the beach to Sasko Beach, and first time we re nursed Sasko Beach and then other beaches after, after storing sandy. Now what our plan, what the federal plan is, is to again put, not again, put the sand into a hopper dredge that the Corps owns. It would go a short distance offshore in, in an area where we surveyed and, and delineated that the hole will split and the sand will be dispersed and it will be the, the, uh, the basis of a project with the Bureau of Aquaculture to uh, a pilot project for restoring shellfish resources. Uh, Oysters on on uh, yeah. on a hard on a hard surface. So that's how we're promoting this or describing this as a beneficial use of the, of the sandy dredge material. So there's, there's much to, to talk about, and I'm sorry to, to, to go on about that. But that 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 gets into the next the, the sand management part of, of what we're talking about, and that 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 is a significant part of our effort to update the harbor management plan. Uh, to, to have in the, in the plan agreement by all the, all the parties is that first that the 100 foot width will be maintained and we'll use the material as, as, as we're talking about. So we've been waiting to complete the update of the plan until we have an agreed upon plan by the Corps of Engineers that, that's agreed to by, the, by DEEP because they have to in effect issue a permit for, for doing, doing this federal work. And when we recently talked with the Corps of Engineers project manager they anticipate in the not too distant future, probably you know after the after the new year, issuing a public notice uh, of the Corps of Engineers' intent to do this project, which they have to do to to to, to solicit public comments on what's called an environmental impact evaluation. Uh, it's not an environmental impact statement because it's it's maintaining something that exists now, but but they have to do an environmental impact assessment. Put it out to public notice and get public comment on it. That's separate from getting the, the DEEP 
permit. Um, but anyway, we, we can talk about this more, you know, at a better time. But so that that's what we're we're, we're going to wait for. And I think the other thing that we should give thought to now is is uh, again communication with the Country Club of Fairfield, because access will be needed through their property. Not, not only will, will the, the, the Corps will use its its own dredge, which is a hopper dredge, self self propelled. But it can't do all the work itself, so there will be excavating equipment that will be necessary, just as the town did in, in 2015 and 2005, where, where the Corps, Corps personnel, they'll rent the equipment, but it will be Corps personnel that will actually excavate sand from the side slope and put it into the, into the dredge. And, and part of the reason for doing that is that they can, in effect, slope the side slope. It will just collapse as, as the dredge cuts into it. So they'll, they'll, they'll work to maintain the side slope and not, not adversely affect the, the, the plants. Uh, so that, that, that's what we're working on now, but we, we, we'll need to pursue discussions with the, with the country club of Fairfield. And, and we're also working, uh, sorry Chris, with, one more thing, with, with the town engineering department, which has been very helpful to us all, all along. And the, and the town and the public works department did a, did a great job, in, again, in 2015 after Storm Sandy, and in 2005, excavating what they could from from the side slope, but they couldn't extend the, you know, the, the width of the channel. Thank you. So we're talking about the most acute point right across from the jetty we just talked about, yes. right? The, that big lump of sand at the country club side. Yes. But there's also the issues at the end of the federal jetty area where the shoaling every storm, and it's a new track that you need to go through, just re regardless of the the government markings. So yes. And so we've talked about that, uh, wh whether we should wait, whether that has to be done with different equipment. And so it can't be lumped together. It can't be lumped well, together. Well, it, it could be lumped, and we had this discussion. We did. We brought this up because I've been taking soundings of the channel, and you know the two shallow spots by the end of the breakwater and then further out on the other side. Anyone with a keel knows where they are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if you stray close to the edges of the channel, you'll, you'll bump that low tide if you draw more than, you know, six, six and a half feet easily. Um, and, the, and the Corps said, well, do you want to combine the two projects? <clears throat> Uh, and the answer is we'd love to. However, that means we're not going to dredge this for another X number of years. We can't wait that long. So that's, spoiler alert, that's what you're doing. As soon as we get through this dredging, you're going to be working on the rest of the channel dredging. Right. And then, you know, all it, the way out and in yeah. again, which is, we have to start now. It takes time. and we need to It's different sand. It's different, needs yeah, its you know, own it's testing. It needs its own disposal here. site. Oh, yeah. It just, it just. This with the other but I have this one over here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to watch. And then over here, too, that I don't like it in this area. When was this photograph taken? 1919. Okay. 1919? Oh, okay. 1919? No, 2019. 2019. I'm sorry. 1920, it's the end. And that was a good friend, Steve Ferguson, who was a good friend. And then he plays in working he would allow me to come up and but so anyway if, if, if we were to combine the two projects which is feasible to do it would it would take more time and we'd, we'd, we'd lose the time on the and so one thing you guys should know too is that Jeff will show you at some point this the wall along the harbor hmm. you know by the country club connects to the jetty it's a continuous right. wall under all that pile of sand oh. it's never this has all come over over the years this whole area doesn't go on there and the, and the other part of the project that it's not the core is the core is not working on now is if we can restore the hundred foot channel, what what do we do to try to reduce the the, the sand the volume of sand that's, that's continuing to come over the jetty? And we've talked about that for for many years, uh, but that's going to be something that will be the responsibility of the commission and hopefully working in coordination with with the with the country club. And one last thing yeah. before I jump on the car and continue. Ye Yacht Yard is getting shallower and shallower, as anyone with a dinghy will know. We have to maintain public access as a commission. And now at low tide, mm -hmm. you know, I tie up the whaler towards the end of the middle. Just about anything in from my end spot at low tide, you can't get in there. It's a low to very low tide. Uh, there's water on the outside, but a lot of the middle doesn't have water. Both sit on the bottom at low tide now. So one of the things that was very yeah. difficult for me to get my head wrapped around when I started on the commission here with understanding that the subsurface um, material in that part of the harbor is very different than what we were just talking about, and that material is is seriously um, troubled. And and 
the options for cleaning that up are either very expensive removal and drying and trucking away, or finding some way in the future to be able to find cap material to put it in an approved place in the sound. And in all these years, that has not occurred. So it doesn't look like it's going to anytime soon. So, yeah, I just so suggested it's interesting yeah. to, as a new right. commissioner, to learn about the different sort of uh, sand Sand. quality that it's we such have close in proximity. all right. right near each other right. and very different problems for right. us as we face right. as the commission. I suggest that the water is very clear this time of year in particular. I get out there on a sunny day at low tide and walk, you know, go down the yacht yard, the metal yeah. ramp where the ideal docks are and look on the shore side. You can see the, how close the bottom is there and then come over and look at the dinghy docks, walk there and take a look at how low it is, the launching ramp, and then walk over to uh, Lower Wharf and walk around Lower Wharf, get down low by the pilings. And I think that's it's worth yeah. a little field trip. Okay. One, one of the other things we talked about, though, in, when we decided not to go forward, well, we couldn't go forward with the dredging, but one of the things we talked about is that even if we, with the permit that we got from Deep, if we had dredged in that area around the dinghy dock, we couldn't go beyond about halfway up the dinghy dock. That the deep wouldn't allow us to go from halfway up the dinghy dock towards the shore. So even if we'd spent all that money dredging, we still would have had half the dinghy dock bumping at, you know, half tide. So um, it, that, that that part of it's probably not going to change. Yeah. Okay. So we just did we just did um, uh, ship grant refund, and we jumped ahead to sand management, which is the code words for dredging. Okay. Um, any questions about uh, sand management or lower war or um, ship grant refund? Okay, so then now we are going back to the lower wharf risk assessment and rules project, which has been managed by Mr. Hyman and Mr. Harris. So uh, I think. One thing that's become clear is that the simple beauty of Southport Harbor is the result of so many people worrying and studying and laboring uh, to keep it as beautiful and safe as it is. And yeah. nothing in this commission is as simple as we would like it yeah. to be. Yeah. The same can be said with Lower Wharf Green, which is the area that people walk out on and enjoy. Uh, and just for background for, for the new people, uh, that whole area, Lower Wharf Green, we call it, as well as the piers and so forth that were damaged a year ago uh, heavily and then, and then removed because of the storm about one year ago in December, uh, has been the focus <coughs> of risk management work by the town for over a year. And... Uh, the risk assessment effort uh, was led by the risk manager for the town, and some of us on the commission worked with him and listened to the findings of the risk consultants. We're talking about the green area and the shoreline area that people sometimes walk out to with dogs, and kids, mm -hmm. and so forth. And, of course, the, the pier itself, which people fished off of until they couldn't because it was destroyed and removed. It was decided by the town that we needed sign a sign to manage that area. We needed rules. So there were two things driving the effort that uh, I'm involved with with George, a sign. Don, excuse me, can you just move that microphone a little closer if you don't mind? Yep, we just did, Bill. Thank you. Thank, thank you. All right, so one thing driving it was the risk assessment done by the town and the need to enumerate the risks and regulate and state rules about all those risks. The other thing driving the content of the sign, which I'm about to show you our latest version of, uh, were the terms of the deed that actually gave the lower wharf to the town, where certain provisions had to be spelled out uh, according to the terms of the grant of the grantee. Um, so both those driving forces risk and deed resulted in a list of rules that my wife says I'm listening to our that's a lot of rules and it is but what you have to understand is i'm about to pass out the sign the sign that we're about to show you is more of a legal document 
than a billboard you would see or design for 95 or any other location. There were things that had to be on this sign. It's been reviewed by the town attorney. It's been reviewed by the risk manager, by the Department of Parks and Recreation, by the Public Works Department, and by this commission in earlier versions. So what you're seeing reflects all that review and approval. And let me pass it, pass around copies of it so you can see. I can't wait to see this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm trying. I had to I feel like I had to set it up because um, it's copy dense. Now, what this is is it's not the other thing that this is not not an effort to tell the history, beautiful as it is, right. of South Port Harbor. That's an opportunity that we might get to in another moment, uh, but or another session. But that's not the goal here. The goal here was to legally communicate risks and regulations to make for a safer lower wharf green area and to comply with the terms of the deed, uh, which are the last four bullets on this long list. Earlier discussions with the with this commission uh, urged a reduction of copy. And what you're seeing here is actually, I would say, 40% less verbiage. Would you agree, George? than what we started with. Um, and we've included icons to try to make it more visually attractive. This sign itself, um, if any, I have some extra copies if we, anyone needs it. This sign itself was modeled after an existing sign at Southport Harbor, at, uh, excuse me, Southport Beach. And it's actually the same vendor we would use this is the sign at Southport Beach oh. that we used as a model. Yeah. And it's architecturally similar. Our sign will be lower and wider. And the reason for that is we don't want to obstruct the view. We want people to be able to see the, see the sound as they walk up Harbor Road and enter this area. But most of the first I would say six bullets were written by the risk manager for the town. Uh, uh, and the rest of it was a condensation of information from written by the rest of us. So what we'd like to do is uh, I'm setting this up and then we can talk about this, but this, this is um, the best we could do under the circumstances. George, did you want to, and after, after we get, hopefully you'll approve this tonight, and then there are some next steps that we have to do after this, and George can speak to that. Yeah, we uh, will run it by the Historic District Commission for their comments. Um, we reached out to them early in the process and received back from them their guidelines to what would be appropriate. Uh, and these all fit within those guidelines. Um, also, of course, the Susquehanna Association. Susquehanna. 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 Right, Susquehanna uh, Association uh, will be notified and, and uh, ask for their blessing. Um, just keep them in the loop. I don't have a contact person with the Susquehanna Association. I have been in contact with Jeff. Maybe Jeff. 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 Mr. Russell was today, so you can contact George Russell at the Russell Agency. Oh. Great. Thank you. I know who he is. And after that, we've already approved the budget for the sign. Well, we have. We have the, the RPM, RPM needs to yeah. approve it. Yeah. Right. So the sign would be. Uh, you know, the, the, the posts are six feet tall, or eight feet tall, but it has to be buried two feet for it to stand up. Uh, it would face, the back of it would face the sound. The, uh, as you walk into Lower Wharf, we would, as you walk into the Lower Wharf Green, there's a rock wall. It would be on the right side of the rock, rock wall with the back of the sign facing the sound and the letters facing people as they walk in. 
Uh, once the sign posts are buried, um, the sign might be four or five feet tall, something like that. Uh, and and uh, 44 inches wide. Right, and the Public Works Department has agreed to in install the sign for us at no cost. So, so this started this started uh, last. Uh, the risk management started about a year ago. Oh, a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. Yeah. Uh, the, the commission was long concerned about this pier even before the storm. I think I think Pat Carroll remembers fishing off that pier. So um, it's been around for uh, we believe at least a hundred years. Hello. It, no. Anyway, it's been around a long time and it needed to be replaced. Well, but this, the risks are the risks that we are described here are more than just the, the piers. That's right. The risks yes. involve all these things that you see. Right, right, right. Swimming is swimming. Swimming is very dangerous, and we and illegal. And illegal. Yeah. So, so at the bottom are the the deed related things. Right, and that right. they that's okay. pretty well spelled out. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, if they look a little peculiar, but that's they're well, in. Right. So they're in the deed. If they I are could peculiar. Ask for clarification, and, and I recognize Don and George how much work has been going into this, and it's a process that's been going on for a long time. But am I correct in understanding that what we're talking about as the deed to the lower work green is actually more than one deed? There are two pieces of property. There was the first piece of property, which is the, the sort of the big area that was purchased. The Harbor Commission and Saskatoon purchased that piece of property. The second piece of property, which is to the south, the smaller piece of property to the south, yeah, Jeff. was a, in a land swap with the people, with some folks who lived on Harbor Road. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the reason, right. So I, I want to just draw the clarification of the benefit of the, of the commission here. My understanding of it is that there were there were two deeds. The uh, what I'll call the older deed is the larger piece of land that constitutes, I think, what most people see is most of the surface area of Lower Wharf Green, the two parts there, and then the, the newer deed, the more recent one, is the area that is just provides water access in that corner. Right, there. right, right. And so the, the question I want to clarify also is the rules that we're talking about that are being stipulated, because it's hard sometimes here to separate two risk management. And, a, and a, an agreement to post rules for it, that the rules are specific to the newer portion or the smaller piece. Am I correct in understanding that? Well, they they were, but the when the town agreed to accept the gift, the um, agreement says that the rules will apply, the the rules will be incorporated into the new deed. So the rules the rules would be incorporated into both. Yeah. The so total, no, the, the total the, green. Right. The rules apply. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Just to point out one other thing, um, copy is dense, but each letter will be three quarters of an inch tall. So it'll be much easier to read than you see right here. Uh, three quarters of an inch is equal to the South Fork, the beach, South Fork side. beach side. Can I ask a quick yeah, question yeah. about this? Is the, the reason that this is coming to pass <laughs> was driven by the town's risk assessment and then therefore because we're now doing a sign we also have to incorporate the deed restrictions or will the, the no, deed thought, actually require that we didn't have attorney fallon contact you and well there were some complaints of, no he didn't contact me he contacted the first select woman's office oh, okay. and there were some complaints about activities down there and where is the sign that should have been posted? So people were in some hubbub. And yeah, said, there's uh, a little bit of. We need to have a sign down there. And yeah. the town jumped on and said, now if we're going to have a sign, we've got to have all these well, risks enumerated. Well, it, it was yeah. a, little, a little more fluid than that. So they contact complaints about behavior down there. Then, particularly the first summer during COVID, there was an enormous amount of swimming and jumping and running from the. In, in front of boats, in front of, into the channel, got which is illegal. Right. Yeah. Um, and so then we said, well, so you know, you've yeah. got this piece of property <laughs> and it's risky. Shouldn't we have a sign posted? And then consulted the risk manager and then this here is we a, are. There's another um, hot potato in this whole equation that's dogs. <laughs> um, we This is intentionally called Lower Wharf Green. Right. Because if it were a park, 
there would be different regulations and different rules. And the town is comfortable calling it a green because that allows us to use the law, a looser language, a looser language that's here. And all of us know that uh, dog walking there is a charged subject. This will generate more conversation with this commission going forward when yeah. it does sign up. Yeah. But I'm afraid it will. So, so a formal action was taken to name this the Lower Wharf Green? Mm -hmm. who, who, takes, who took that action? We did. <laughs> Basically what happened was the, the conversations with the Parks Department and the risk, risk manager and the town attorney agreed that we could call it Lower Wharf Green. So that's, was, that, that's a decision that this commission made to, to call it the Lower Wharf Green since the commission is responsible for That's right. Managing. That's right. Should that, is, is that... I don't think we ever actually... Should that actually acted on as a, as a motion? I don't, I don't think we ever moved. I don't think we ever had a motion, but I think that that was, that was based on... And then all of the discussion to date has reflected what I've just said, and... That was the position we came to. Probably, I don't know if it's in the and minutes. Then there's also the well. I'm, I'm not. I'm just raising it because it yeah. indeed requires the Sasquanog also to be involved in decisions affecting the the, the property. But so the, the naming of it is something that would trigger the, the involvement. But I, I think it should be discussed with the Sasquanog. I mean, that that is the process. The next step, as George mentioned, is to talk with Sasquanog Association, review this with them as we're reviewing it with you now. Get their blessing. The county or the administration would be involved with the naming by... Yeah, the naming has significance, you know, with the open space areas and, and the way the properties were acquired. And, and But I just raised it as something to just... But that was the thing. It, it couldn't be called open space, really. Right. And that, nor could it be called a park, really. I think there's a formal designation. But, well, that's what I'm saying. There's a difference between a name and a designation, though, right? So yeah. designation yeah. as a green doesn't necessarily mean it's name needs to carry green one or the other. You it could know. be Sasquatch green. Yeah. <clears throat> the, yeah. The legal. <coughs> the, legal know, the, the name Lower Wharf, I don't believe, is new. Right. To this. It's the yeah. word it's, green. It's in, lower Wharf is in the deeds or other things, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. currently named no, Lower Wharf. Yep. I believe it's designated as a green, but that may be, the, at a minimum, the piece that needs to be shored up. The, my recollection is that the parks people recommended that in, in conversations we had that we used that language. Oh, I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure somebody did, but I don't think in terms of actually naming it that the commission yeah, the ever said. The authority and, could, and never acted to actually make regulations for this, which the commission has the authority to do. Right. right. So the regulations that are reflected in the sign are regulations that are elsewhere in, in, the, in, 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 the, in the city's, in, in the town's code or in the deed. One of the things we had talked about early on is the commission itself could adopt regulations, and whether whether it wants to do that here, and, well, that's another that's another, that's another matter. Uh, well, I think I think going forward, what we want to do is be 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 get the commission's blessing on the name and the rules, and then you guys go to Sasquanog with the blessing, and once if they have suggested changes, then bring it back here because in in effect there are partners in in. In, in I, I won't even say managing it, but certainly being involved. But, but the Lower Wharf has historic significance, and all, all of the old documents and the references to it all refer to the Lower Wharf, including when it was first authorized to be filled by the people in the 1700s yeah. or thereabouts. So changing the name to Lower Wharf Green, I think, it just needs to be thought about, and especially well, with respect to the historic The point I'm making, is making sure there's clarification on the designation would be paramount regardless of the name. Yeah. Because the, de the designation of the green as opposed to a park or an open space is very important as it relates to the town, you know, ordinances that apply to it. So why do we even have to say welcome to Lower Wharf Green? Why can't we just say welcome to Lower Wharf Green, Lower Wharf? I mean, if somebody's decided that it's a green and the rules are those things that apply to a green, then... Right, at the moment, is, is there a wharf? It's, yeah. That's the name of the place. No, but I, I mean... The, <laughs> With a wall, it's got to it's a wall. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And the so, harbor management plan also has the designation of the lower yeah. wharf in it, right? So, 
So what's the deed? This is uh, not the deed, but the actual the plan for this committee also has the designation of these different locations, right? Could you show me roughly where the sign would go on that? Um, okay. It's by the rock, right? Yeah. By the car? As you, right? uh, as you, right. as you walk in, you see there's an opening in the rock wall? I do. Right yeah. That's we go to the right inside on the... Right corner. Huh? Right corner, in there. Yeah. So that's in, where we're in here. You're yes. Oh. oh, here, this might be helpful to you. Right. So, before. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's some other signage, memorial signage there. There's a plaque yeah. on a rock and two people that. And, and break in the, the wall. Yeah. Where there are mm -hmm. some boulders here. There's a uh, plaque concerning the, the actual ac acquisition here. of the oh, house. And that has yeah. been, okay. had to reference Mr. Trebs, who was the owner of it. Right. And then and there's there are two other plaques oh, yeah. for. For That's Mr. Right. Russell and also, also Steve Galvin. But again, all, all, all the historic oh, yeah. references and you know, all of the old, the history of Fairfield, it's all, whether there's a, it's the lower war. That, that, that's all I think. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Jeff, as I Thank recall, there were photographs you saw from the 30s where there was no wooden stock there, right? I've got. If you mention that, I, I have some of the old permits I, sh I should refer to show, show them to you. I mean, there's a lot of, it goes, your, kind of your question earlier about the, that northern piece of this, it was longer, I think, even in one picture we saw it, and, um, and it's been missing the whole northern piece for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, well, so but, this, but there was a period where there was none we saw in one photo. Right. So the, the commission itself took out this piece so the many years part, ago. Yeah. And that was when we had hoped to have a, a dock for the community sailing program established there, and that was going to open that up, but that never materialized. But anyway, thank you. Thank so, you. commissioners, um, Don and George have worked hard on this. What's your what's your what's your pleasure? Well, so I'll, I'll, I, I know how much work has gone into this, and I and I know how controversial this is going to be when it comes up. And so, there's a fine balance between communicating the mandatory need to be communicated from a risk perspective and from a legal perspective. And I think maintaining what is, you know, the historic nature of, of the green area, that's where that's where the debate's going to be. Um, I do find it interesting that it, it seems to me, one, that the upper part is over risk. There's more things here than even on the beach signs. You know, then we don't say use the space at your own risk on the town beach sign that we're using here. As a, and so it, it seems to me there's an opportunity to condense this as much as possible, at least have parity with other aspects. It just seems to be over lawyer to risk to me. Totally. The, the other is I, I wonder if there's an opportunity to go to um, maybe a South Spinoza or whoever on the deed and say we really want to uphold the nature and the spirit of what those rules are. But the language itself is going to create a sign and so forth that was probably not the intention of the people that donated the deed. Can we agree on some new language? That may be a ridiculous ask, and I'm sure <laughs> I'm not the first person who's brought this up. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if that would re because it is spelled out. No, no, I've, I've, I've read the yeah. language and I've read the language in the deed, and I understand that this is to the letter of the deed. That doesn't mean that things can't be amended if the folks are responsible. But would it require it. rewriting the deed? Is what my question is. Or some sort of agreement or, or amendment um, to, you know, I'm sure when the deed was written, they weren't thinking about things like jet skis and paddleboards either. Maybe yeah. they were. But so the, the the point is, I get that they don't want cars and bikes. I understand that they don't want people lighting bonfires. I mean, I, I get the spirit of it, and I and. I don't think that it would be our position to fly in the face of that. However, there's very specific wordy language here that is going to create what some people are going to think is a billboard oh, yeah. yeah. on the green. That's not in keeping with what the conservation you know group has worked so hard to do. So anything that could help minimize it or streamline it would be helpful. That's, that's you know, my view. Where it says uneven surfaces and sudden drops. I mean, kind of common sense. Don't try yeah. it. Well, and the beaches don't say that. 
Right, right, but there are sinkholes. Well, uh, there are sinkholes in the lower wharf that that uh, and that they go there. Oh, nice. In the crowd. And but, I mean, I, yeah, no, I, I get it. Watch out for those. I mean, yeah, <laughs> and of course, well, of just, course. I think we were. I think the risk manager and the risk consulting yeah. people look at things a little differently than I do and you do on these things, and they would rather over communicate than under communicate because there's a, the town has some exposure. But when you over communicate to this level. Many of the details that you want them to see actually are lost. Yeah. Um, I don't argue that, but I'm just saying that that's why you have to look at this as more of a legal document than. You guys have whittled this down to the best of your ability to, to do this. I mean, I, I don't think there's any choice, really. But it's unfortunate that it has to be so legalistic on a big billboard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Doug, you you poured a condensed version earlier in this exercise too. I remember getting some copies. I did actually. Yeah. Yeah, you condensed it, and we used that. And you know, it, it it's this balancing act we have to do between what the town attorney, the risk management consultant, I have a risk report I can show you, found, and what their recommendations are, and what we know to be, you know, an easier read. Uh, Part of the uh, issue has been a changeover in town government, too. We've, we've sort of lost our communication with the uh, uh, Peter Ritchie. Was he a lawyer? or He's the risk manager. Lawyer. He's a risk manager. He, but he was working with the former town attorney, and then there was a transition. So, um, I don't know. I'm willing to go back to Susquehanna, Susquehanna, Susquehannog. Susquehannog and say, if, you know, say, is this still your language? Uh, and should we well, talk, reach out to the new risk manager for the town and say, can we pair this down? I mean, you have to go to Susquehannog anyway. Yeah. And we were going to, out of, you know, my practice has been to just keep Peter Ritchie in the loop, the risk manager out of courtesy, so he would mm -hmm. he would see this anyway. I guess one of the things, I, I, again, there's legal stipulations here, I wonder what reason would apply, but there are public spaces in town where wheeled vehicles, motorized vehicles, firearms, fires are just not allowed, and, and mm -hmm. we're not calling them out it's everywhere in town that, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so it's interesting that, that we've chosen th this as, as the space where we're saying you're not allowed to operate a firearm or drive a car or light a fire. I mean, we did have earlier, in an earlier version, we had language that said, according to the deed, da 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 da, these are prohibited. Mm -hmm. And then it, to try to streamline it, we took that out <laughs> because we just wanted to get to the behavior, not the mm -hmm. legal background. Does the iconography on the right-hand side just speak to it enough? Um, I mean, our designer felt it did, and I I think you, you know. We've but the lawyer did not. Well, what would the risk manager say? You think, or the town attorney, if we just had the icons? We could ask that question, but I think I know the answer. I mean, I think I mean the risk assessment report that the town was given by its risk consultants called for signage like this. Do you have the deed with you? George. George has it. Okay, I was just trying to find it. So I, I, I have a copy too. It, it is interesting that, that in the deed it says the property is to be known henceforth as Lower Wharf. So okay. I think to comply with the deed, I, I think you really need to take out the Lower Wharf green. In, 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 well, I mean, I can raise that point with. All right, so I'm hearing I'm hearing a suggestion that we raise the idea of removing green from this, although that doesn't really impact the larger issue. Which yeah. is that it's wordy. I know it's yeah. wordy. Yeah. Um, the, dog, the dog one doesn't need the leading in of that. It can just go right to 
pound regulation state, and then all dogs must be leashed. In. You don't need the lead in about welcoming dogs and people and their owners. Yeah. Yeah. The rule. The rule is. Well, all dogs must be leashed. Right. But this was all triggered due to people yeah. behaving badly by jumping in the water and getting in the way of boats. Dogs. Well, the water. and dogs. And, what, and dogs. Also dogs. Yeah. So those yeah. two yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. We have a uh, you know a manifesto. Here. Yeah, and people people launching dinghies from the little beach. They were doing that. Yeah, I mean I all sorts of behavior. Yeah. Yeah. We got requests to have bonfires <clears throat> there at night. <clears throat> Okay. I mean, all of. So in fact, all of these are. Well, a lot of them. Triggered. Are, yeah. 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 Or yeah. triggered. Yeah. My, my point is, you could put a blank sign up there, and it's going to be yeah, fire and storm. Yeah. 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 Zero yeah. words on it. <laughs> we blow that. Not only, not, not only that, but any sign you put up, but we we believe that the risk is now managed completely, and no. then these behaviors no. will no. 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 not at all. Protect. No, but the change. It's you're informing. People of risks where there now is no information of risks. You are making that extra effort to point out these risks. That we've been told that that is a legal obligation that the town has. John, do they have the same obligation at Curry Green? I don't know. No, I'm just no. been Which focusing. Is the same on thing. You know, if you go to the edge of Perry Green at low tide and you fall off. You're right. Right. And there's no there's, sign at Perry Green. There's no sign there. Yeah, I mean and that's part that Sasquanog has a role in that, in that managing that too. They sure do. You, you, I mean, I, I just wanted to decide what we've been asked to decide by the town. Well, I think the next step would be to go to HDC as you have to, and go to Sasquanog and get some input. And um, you know, if if nobody but us thinks that this is too wordy, then you know, maybe it maybe it goes, but I, I think what we're going to find is that, I mean, you say you say it, George says it, it's a lot of words. I mean, that's that's everybody's initial. Can I read it? Yeah, yeah. Nobody, yeah. nobody's nobody. Every it's everybody's response to it, You know, the town attorney and the risk assessment uh, officer requiring that it look this way and no. have all of this information. No, it's our job to do that. But, but we they have re they well they wrote a first draft. We abbreviate. What you're seeing is an abbreviation. So, but so, but <laughs> so this is really this is an abbreviation. This would be an abbreviation of their recommended language. Yes. Yes. And they yeah. they they have gone along with it. They have reviewed. Yeah. I mean, there was an initial first draft that Peter wrote, and that we just kept compressing it, compressing it to what we're, where we are now. But if we if we took it out and, and removed a lot of it, let's say. They they could approve it or not approve it or they could approve it or not approve it, but it's in that doing that would be inconsistent with all the earlier discussion we've had with the town. We we this and these ideas maybe not this exact language have always been part of the discussion. Well, then my other thought is well then let's make it as small as possible. <laughs> And the icon's big. Exactly. The icon's big. Make it so small that make nobody it, ever reads it. Make anyway. it small. Make the icon <laughs> big. Uh, seriously. Or a cute code that's ever going to read this. Right. Nobody's going to read this. Or a cute code that opens well, it up. Or, or make the rules as large as possible and put the sign in front of 1100 Harbor Road, not at the entrance to the lower wharf. That was the grantor. Hi, that's me. Click on, click you on. Put it there. I, I mean, there may be three or four of these that are of critical. You need yeah. to have these notified in large print. And maybe the rest of it is go here. You can see you're not supposed to shoot guns off either. Right. You know? Right. I mean, the dog piece, hopefully, you could really get down. Don't you think one could? We've got, if yeah. you look at two big bullet down. points, two very big bullet points. Yeah. Just the issue about just clean up after your dog and control your dog. Yeah. All right. If you, if you do those things, if leashed, it, it might buy you two lines of copy, well, maybe three. That would be good. Okay. But, I mean, I'm just good. trying to tell you what, you know, you're, you're buying maybe two inches of space. We're going to do this inch by inch. I, 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 <laughs> If you were to if you were to take out the eraser and say, well, dog Let's owners and their pets, they're welcome. The dog owners are fine, but 
this time they're allowed with their pets. Sometimes they're not. I'm a dog owner, but my pet's no longer with me. I think there was, and the idea was to make it, you know, team friendly. Not uh, pet, you know, owner, a little friendly. To you're gonna go crazy. (laughs) Get over. I mean, also riding by committee is. I know. Yeah. Challenging. I had sent the commission a package that included the first deed and the second deed and gave the outline of the specific restrictions. Does anyone have those with them? The second deed? Yeah, we have that. Um, this is truly a thankless task. Yeah. Yeah. The existing I mean, beach sign. <clears throat> oh, my God. Um, do you have the existing beach on South Fork Beach? I'm just looking yes. at your picture. Yeah, they have fewer rules. I mean, swimming is allowed there. Yeah, yeah. there is a house across the street from that sign, but they and that land is. It's it's the it's the sign of that. Correct me if I'm wrong, Don, but when we first started out on this project, we met with a lawyer or a risk assessment person for the town, and a lot of this wording. Yeah, that's right. Um, So maybe they're lawyering up and they want you know as many words in there as I think lawyering is right. But I mean the 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 town attorney and the risk assessment officer clearly approves of what was went on at Sasco Beach. Which is much, yes. much less. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, why, you know, so but, why is it okay there and not? Well, it's it's, it's well, a difference. Right. Okay. Yeah. But it, if you, if you're saying in the spirit of your discussion with them to go and and reduce it, flagrantly would be causing them to be upset. I mean, we can ask that question, and you know, we can say, look, here's what we've got based on earlier discussions with you. We've abbreviated as much as we can. Does it have to be this complicated? Is there any way we can still be dutiful to our risks and make this shorter? I'm going to make a copy of this, if you don't mind. This is where it says that the grantee agrees to install a sign on the parcel, specifically referencing the restrictions as above set forth. Right. Right, right. Yeah. And I mean, that was the town. That was the town. Yeah. yeah. And then there was a, a letter yeah, from you do it. Attorney yeah. Fallon. I think it was Attorney Fallon. Yeah, it's just interesting language. It also says referencing. But it's not saying explicitly. Again, that comes down to the grand door. Mm-hmm. Which is the town. No. Uh, the, 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 the town, no, the grantee. The grantee is the yep. Harbor Road LLC. Or, yeah, you know, and they've and, and the deal is done, and they've moved on, and yeah. But isn't the second deed specific just to that smaller piece of property? I'm sorry. The second deed that Betty's referring to is just the, is just the transferred property from 1100 Harbor Road. Yes, yeah, but, but it says the restriction it gives. It's subject to the deed restrictions of the lower wharf, and it refers to the volume and page at first. So it incorporates at all the restrictions in the first deed, and in addition there to the following activities, and it is right. so, but, but that would be the point, though. This doesn't supersede the original deed. This says it's subject to the restrictions of the original deed, right. and then it stipulates right. some additional ones. It doesn't say the original deed needs to have the sign. Yes, that, that's the point. Yeah. Because the, the, original, the, the, the original deed is for an historic property. Yeah. But, you, that, that's really significant. but you still have to put it up. Right. You still have to put up something so, somewhere. So my point is, I, I don't... I'm not the lawyer in the room, but I don't believe that the way this language is written means that the, the two deeds are combined as it relates to these stipulations of sunbathing that can be pertaining to the entire, what I'll call, consolidated parcel of both deeds. This deed is subject, as it says here anyway, is subject to the restrictions of the original deed. Mm-hmm. And then it has a provision that says, in addition, the following activities are restricted. So the, the sign is, in my view, specific to the second deed for the smaller portion, mm-hmm. and also it could be... I'll copy it for you. I don't think that's... I think it incorporates both. So, so we, there's another meeting that comes in here at 7. <laughs> it's okay. 6.35. May I suggest that you guys go to Sasquanon, go to HDC, and chat with them? Mm-hmm and bring that back to the commission 
And if you get a chance, go to the town attorney and the Who new, yeah. the yeah. new one, and just say this is killing you know, why us. Why are you making yeah. us? Yeah. Why are you asking for all this wordage when it's South killing Florida's us? Yeah. Beach doesn't have it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, you you you've spent so much time on it. Yeah. I hate to, yeah. Yeah. but let, but yeah. I think you move well, it forward yeah. if you get to Sassanog and get there's to HDC. There's a point I want to clarify though. This mm-hmm. deed, which I'm reading right now, is very specific to a parcel of land. Which deed are you reading? The new one second, or the old? I'm reading the second deed. Here, okay. Which is very, the deed that I'm going to call 1101 Harbor yep, Road. Yep, yep, yep. It's across from 1100. Yep. It's very specific to a parcel of land, parcel being known as 1101 Harbor Road. That's right. what the deed says. The language says the grantee, which is the town, shall install a sign on the parcel. Right. Specifically referencing the restrictions. Right. Okay. That's the legal requirement. Yeah. So could we have... We two could signs. have two signs potentially. Two signs. Yeah, we could. feels like the wharf needs something that's a different ball of wax. I suggest we, we minimize it. In 100 plus years, this wharf hasn't had a sign, nor have the other ones, I don't think. But nice. I, And I do think yeah. all of that risk language could absolutely be consolidated or found somewhere else. But that's why I'm saying the distinction to me between the legal requirement when the town accepted the property and is written here is different than the, the risk. And the, and the legal requirement, at least as it's written, says that the sign uh, on the parcel. Putting the sign not on the parcel may not satisfy the legal requirement. Interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. and correct it. There's, a, there's also a paragraph that says the grantee agrees it'll post a sign on the parcel referencing the restrictions one through four inclusive. It does state, the next sentence says that it's all, it recognizes all of the restrictions. I just made a lot of copies of that. You know that, but okay. Doug was saying it's, just, it's the reference to the parcel. You know, the, the reference to the sign is for the for the parcel, and that's the parcel acquired in the second, that's the subject of the second deed. But I, I think the discussion with the historic district and Sasquatch, mm-hmm. bring it forward. But, but again, there's, there's, no, there's no sign, similar sign at, at Perry Green. So I think you, if, if, if this is required for this parcel, they require something for Perry Green, and I can see that. They haven't done a risk assessment for Perry Green. Not, yeah. They might need, they should, but they haven't. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, our responsibility is Lower Wharf, not Perry Green. Right. So. And there weren't people jumping in front of boats and dogs yeah. swimming in front of boats. Yeah, and which, all of which happened. All yeah. Uh, yeah. at Lower Wharf. Yeah. So well, that, which that's is fair. So, the, yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah. It's so fair. the interesting thing to me is that there, there are two different things here. There's a legal obligation as it relates to posting a sign, and then there's the town risk assessment in terms of what it wants to do on Lower Wharf. There could be a unique opportunity to combine these two things if it's done well and, and not creating a billboard or something. We may not also be able to take advantage of that opportunity. Right. But they are two different things, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. It, which doesn't mean we need to automatically put them together. There's an opportunity if done right. Right. But, does, but I think they need to be addressed separately and, and evaluated separately or, or combined. I do wonder if I mentioned this months ago whether it was it the QR the, the QR code the QR yeah. code on the side. I've seen this in park in and yeah. having at least some of it be I'm referencing yeah. a link to our, our website hey. and, and have stuff posted there as an alternative to not have so much copy on whatever we mm-hmm. just suggest you might take a, next time you're at Lake Mohegan, next time you might enter the marsh at Pine Creek, mm-hmm. look at the signs there. Okay. They're worse than this and harder to read. These signs, you know, this is a kind of a bargain with the devil. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, there are certain things you have to do even if they look funny Yeah. because there's found to be an obligation. I think this is in that category. Um, Definitely. I, I agree with you. You know, I, I'm... I'm so, I had the same discussion with my wife all week. <laughs> and I'm I'm not disagreeing with the obligation. Yeah, right. As a, this is over lawyered and over risk. Yeah. And I think they're two different things. And probably putting a sign of this magnitude 
on the small parcel in, in front of the property that donated would get them to work with us on revising the language. <laughs> that's, that's Maybe. Oh, there you go. Uh, let's see what George wants. I mean, yeah. well, let's tell them that's where it's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See what they say. I mean, that's the that's the next step anyway. You've got we've got nothing to lose to hear hear what they have to say and what HDC has to say. Mm -hmm. And thank you. And yeah, yeah. Thank this is, you. It is a ton of power. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and so we think nobody's nobody's <laughs> arguing the spirit of upholding yeah. the agreement. Right. This is how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Warren committee. Mr. Warren. And, um, so, for the new members, uh, the, the Mooring Committee is uh, tasked with uh, administering the uh, moorings uh, assignments and fees and employee administrative tasks of the moorings uh, moorings in the harbor. So, in the past, um, this has been an enormous task that Jack Hirschler has taken on and done all the work in, in addition to uh, our harbor master. Um, so the heavy lifting has kind of been done. <laughs> so I've only been doing this for about four months, and my biggest task has been to cancel all the meetings <laughs> because, <laughs> because it just didn't seem right. And, uh, and in fact, it hasn't been. So, so that may change in January because that's when uh, new mooring assignments come up. Um, and, but anyway, the, uh, the, the biggest thing <clears throat> with the mooring um, uh, subcommittee is that uh, uh, we've implemented the uh, online mooring uh, system. We, we, we contract with online mooring to um, to uh, provide a, um, a website and, and, a, and a computer program to to do the administration. Uh, Jack's done an enormous amount of work to implement it, and it's now operating very smoothly. And uh, so uh, that's pretty much it. I uh, you know starting in January, we'll probably start meeting again and uh, and getting the tasks of the new more in assignments and, and renewals and so on and uh, going. Great. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, HMC, our response to the uh, draft POCD, uh, we sent the letter. Jeff, do you? I, I talked to one of the TPNZ commissioners, and we were asked to get that letter to them before that meeting, but the meeting went on so long they never got to the discussion of the POCD. So. So more, more, more will be revealed. More, more to be revealed, and, and I think it would behoove us to, to put together a, a uh, sort of a submittal, maybe a, a two or three page statement of the Harbor Management Plan and the, the role of the commission as, as, as a submittal to the, to the uh, TPNZ for uh, inclusion in the POCD. But they, but they didn't get to the POCD the night last week. All that work for oh, we, we rushed. Well, we got it done. Part of the record. We got it done. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Uh, UI plans. Uh, I I don't know that we've got anything new to report on that. Uh, I know that Senator Huang and Representative Leeper were very happy to get our siting council letter, uh, but more than that, I haven't. Well, the final meeting of the siting council was last week. They'll make a decision in March by March okay. on whether to accept the UI plan as is or make other recommendations. Um, and it's, it, the town of Fairfield, the city of Bridgeport, and others have talked about legal action in courts, appealing courts into the courts on the basis of uh, being deprived of due process yeah. if the outcome is uh, less than what people want. This is sort of an interesting image because the, the monopoles that you see here are on the north side yeah. of the rail line and those were put in, in early I think by 1993. So what's now being proposed is to put monopoles on the south side which would be substantially higher than, than these. So the visual impact is is, uh, is, is significant. 140 feet or 100, more than 140 feet. Up to 145 feet. Taller is better for some reason. But there's many, there's many interesting questions, not to, not to take up the time, but many interesting questions to answer because going west, through Westport all the way down to Greenwich, there's the same electric line. It's just, it's just, They're varying it. It's just the responsibility of Eversource. So there's no, no spots, yeah, like in Greenwich. Nobody has, nobody has heard any plans by Eversource to relocate the line onto monopoles. So does that mean they're waiting for UI to get the approval and then they will come? But what, why, aren't, why aren't they... 
doing the same thing to the to the West. But there's this, right, we'll, we'll see um, what, what takes place. Oh, the other thing is that the DEP, uh, we, we talked with them. <clears throat> Since this is in the coastal area, the, they also, the DEP has to do a review of this for consistency with the policies of the Coastal Management Act. And there are policies concerning uh, aesthetic resources or scenic resources. So the siting council has not yet referred that to DEEP. And DEEP said that there isn't a provision for public comment on that, but they do have to do a review for, for consistency with the Coastal Management Act. Of course, the, the problem is, that, well, I'm sort of editorializing, but there's a significant conflict on the siting council because DEEP has, has a vote on the siting council. So how, how do you reconcile the conflict between energy energy facilities and protection of the environment. Uh, that, 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 that's a matter to be brought up another time. We'll wait and see what happens. Okay. That's old business, new business. Uh, to vote on the meeting schedule, Betty sent out the draft dates. The reason why we're voting on this is because then it gets listed on the town clerk's website. And those are the dates we meet, period, paragraph. If you don't meet on those dates and you have reason to meet as we had to in November to talk about the budget, then it becomes a special meeting, which also has to be noticed and there has to be an agenda and minutes, et cetera, et cetera. But the vote tonight will determine time and place of meetings for the whole year of 2024. So it's the third Tuesday of every month. It is 4.30 meeting um, that Betty had gave you, distributed the list. It says meeting room two. Is this meeting room two? No. Well, that gets, that that depends on what, what other needs there are okay. in the building. It's generally, this year it's been mostly here. In past years, it's been upstairs next to the first select woman's oh. office. That, 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 that and the phone number are variable. <laughs> The meeting dates and times are not. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. The the meeting time, the meeting date, uh, phone numbers, and the place of meeting is always referenced on the agenda. Okay. So, can I have a motion to no, motion to um, accept the draft plan, the draft dates, the third Tuesday of every that month? We accept the uh, meeting draft dates. As proposed? As the third Tuesday of every month for 2024 at 4.30? Seconded. Chris seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, so that's the that's the plan going forward. Uh, any more new business? Could, do we Could, need to do a similar process for the morning committee meetings? Uh, no, that you just... Just to contact, just contact, with, contact um, okay. Jed Carpenter. Jen in the first select woman's office. Okay. Yes. Okay. And she'll give you a phone number. And a, Whenever you need a meeting place for a public meeting, contact Jen Carpenter. She gives you the room assignment and the bridge phone number. That is the phone number yeah. that you call into. Okay? Just one, Anywho, just, one uh, just uh, something that I learned at the last meeting that I hadn't realized, but so for some of the new commissioners that were on, my understanding is as it relates to various committees and projects and initiatives that we would be working on, if two commissioners get together to work on something mm -hmm. is is okay. It's a discussion. If three, if more than two get together, then it's a meeting mm -hmm. and needs to be publicly posted. Absolutely. So. And 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 if you have a meeting with that includes other people, it's a, if it's a public meeting and you're doing the public business, you have to have an agenda. The agenda has to be in the first in the town clerk's office 24 hours in advance of the meeting, and you must produce. You must have a phone number so people can call in if they can't attend. If members of the public can call in if they can't attend, and you record it and you produce minutes, it's it's yeah. it's and, and that's for the purpose of discussing Harbor Management Commission business. Correct. Two yeah. people can get together, obviously. Or and there's well, one, one other yeah. aspect that Kim has emphasized to me: oh, look, we should not be doing business on email, and I'm one of the worst offenders of that. Um, I have done that in the past, and I have been spoken. To. So uh, we need to be doing business here or on the phone. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, paper trails, discoverable information, let's, you know, we need to keep FOIA. Them. FOIA. We need to keep life simple. We're doing public business. The public has a right to hear, a right to listen, and a right to comment. Yeah. Okay. So that's important. And that's important. Can I make a comment before we adjourn? Yeah, we have we've got a couple of the things. Yeah, go ahead. Well, first I wanted to just say um, thanks, Kim, on behalf of all of us. You have been just an amazing chair. Uh, you've, been, you've been given a lot of praise for all your work on the Mooring Committee and I don't know. It's it's just amazing the two of you. I'm humbled by you know your election of me to follow in these footsteps. I I think my heart is in the right place. My energy <laughs> is in the right place. Do I have the same experience as all of you? No. I don't have legal training. I, I I'm a, a well, sailor. You need Jeff. I'm a sailor <laughs> and a kayaker, but I don't have the same marine training that. You have. Uh, but I will always listen and learn, and I see this just so that you, you so that we're clear. I see this. You never can tell what's going to happen in the future, but I see this as a one-year assignment that I will do to the best of my ability. And what happens after that is up to you, okay. not me. Uh, I'm I'm in it to. It was a slim pool of people that could do this job, and I'm. Honored to be able to do it. Uh, we'll see how I feel a year from now. <laughs> uh, but um, it needs to be done. I'm happy to do it. I'll always listen to you and uh, thank you in advance for your help. I would ask you in advance of our next meeting, take a look at the harbor management plan. And I'm also going to ask Jeff, our, the, the wonderful presentation you did uh, and created a while ago on yesterday, today, tomorrow, past, present, future, in the harbor. It's on the website. It's on the website. website. I think we might want to walk through that quickly and have that discussion at our next meeting. I think that's a good context for all of us to have from an education. So we're all starting on the same footing. Um, and hopefully you'll be here. Yeah, I'll be here. Great. Might I say something? Yeah, Jeff. Um, you, know, you, you mentioned uh, gathering at the Horseshoe Tavern yeah. in January, which I'm not going to be able to do, but it, it made me think about our uh, wonderful friend Harris Russell, who's yeah. no longer with us. Yeah. And as you know, Harris was the, I don't know if he was actually the first, I think he was the first chair of the, of the Harbor Commission. But I think it's fair to say that without Harris, um, there might not be a Harbor Commission today or, or a Harbor Management Plan. We started it in 1987, and it was finished in 1995, and there was much opposition to it. People thought we were going to ruin uh, Southport. But I, I found uh, some remarks that from 1995, oh, well, with respect to the, to the Horseshoe Tavern, you know, Har- Harris's grandfather operated a blacksmith shop on Kequot Avenue. Oh. And that, that was, well, Horseshoe. Now, Horseshoe. I won't go into, into, into ah. the whole thing, but, but that, that was prior to the Depression. And then some people said that he, during the Depression he also sold whiskey in the back of the stalls and stuff. But then when he stopped the black stopped operating the blacksmith shop, then it became the, the Horseshoe Tavern. And then there's also the, the Harris Hardware Store and 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 then the, the Russell Insurance Agency and 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 why Harris was named Harris is, has to do with the, the Harris Hardware Store. But anyway, I, I found this, this these comments. Um, <clears throat> so this this is Harris Russell. Um, The last thing I want to say is that I think we all need to remember that approval of the plan, meaning the Harbor Management Plan, by the state of Connecticut is in many ways a beginning. The plan is a guidance document for the town. It doesn't solve every possible problem that may affect the harbor in the years to come, but rather provides a policy and decision-making framework to guide our future decisions and efforts. In this regard, the plan will be as good as the dedication and wisdom of the commission. Furthermore, the plan provides flexibility and will likely be modified over time as conditions in the harbor change and our our understanding of harbor conditions continues to improve. These were were remarks by Harris on February 21st, 1995, after the DEP approved the harbor management plan. 
And I believe these were Mark's remarks were, were either in, in, I forget whether he said these, but, but for the RTM, because the RTM then had to, had, had to adopt the plan. It's very interesting to think back that, that uh, and I think Harris, you know, more I think about him, you know, he, that, and the people who had many generations in, in Southport and Fairfield that look at, at themselves as stewards of the harbor, you know, to, to manage and maintain it, and not, not for using it, but to preserve maintain it for the benefit of future generations. And that, I think that's, you know, it's interesting to look back at what, what, what people have done. That, but the plan is an ongoing, you know. It's a living document. It's a living document. Yeah. We don't, right. well, we're finished now. We don't have to do anymore. Uh, yeah. but anyway, thank, thank you for letting me go on about this. Thank you, Jeff. That was, you. That was very appropriate. Is there any public comment this evening? If I, if I may, Madam Chairman, and I know it's late. I'm over 100 years old. And I would suspect that 90 of those 100 years have been spent in or on Southport Harbor. I started fishing for snapper bluefish with my dad and my brother and sisters when I, I think I was age 10. And I've been part of harbor management since the dates that Jeff has mentioned with Harris and Jeff way back then. And from what I've heard tonight, it's been very, very uh, exciting, and I think I certainly agree that, Madam Chairman, you have just, you get a well done in capital letters. So from what I've heard, I think and I know that Southport Harbor is in good hand, and to all, well done, and happy holidays. Pat, thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Thank you. We're so glad you continue to join us for these meetings. I will. Thank you. Good. And Happy holidays. And Thank you, ma'am. Do you need a ride to the horseshoe? <laughs> <laughs> and a wheelchair. <laughs> Take care, Pat. Thank all right, you. Thank you all very much. Can I have a motion to adjourn, unless there's anything else we want to bring up? Motion to adjourn? Okay. Chris? Second, Doug, Second. all in favor? Aye. Aye. January 16th. Okay, good night now. Good night, Pat. Thank good you, ma'am. Bye-night.